Eventlevel.com Join Eventlevel.com Too big TV.com Promote Promote yourself It's BMRadio.com Join the mayhem M-M-E-Radio.com Make money PatchetRadio.com We support music.com Miss LP Management Yo, 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 yo Check this out It's your boy Blue Collar, a.k.a. Mr. This Is My City, Lex Town, and you're listening to EventRebel.com, DB, Master Wills, what's up? It's your boy Lou from MME Radio, when I ain't knocking motherfuckers out or putting bitches in chokeholds, I'm listening to the main event with Master Wills on EventLevel.com, tap out or nap out, bitches. Number one contender, leaving competition retired with dementia. Helter Skelter, the art of Sun Tzu's mentor. Supernova, a star spawn, getting these hoes heads to turn. Superstar celebs and MCs with sick flows. Step your promo game up, Master Will's main event show. Uh, now check it, I got a squad so thick. Rag em up and Rick go, got that fire to spit. Levy down ass chick, drew a pimp cam click. Blaze one, goo of this mad indie shit. Uh, so drop the bass and raise the treble I'ma let my boy DB elevate your mind to the next level I keep my uh. eye on the street like an eagle My name is DB and yo I listen to the people Main event tonight, my whole click tight Dress is fitted and cufflinks ignite Hottest talent, illest shows Every single week you know it gon' blow Hold up, wait a minute, I'm stuck I am an artist who raps and no one gives a fuck I know I need exposure, my promo game up Hit DB at event level to fill your pimp cup up uh, uh. Ice, chains, grills, guns Tune in the main event if you see number one So this goes out to all my plays and pips Getting more green bass than the fag you print All that gangsta shit, so don't try to compete Main event, ear to the streets Sit back and relax and let the blood burn slow Here we go, main event show Bruce Leroy Glow, stepping toe to toe Mortal Kombat combo Master Wills with that fatal flow Fuck all you motherfuckers, no homo I pledge allegiance to the swag of the main event show In the indie republic, not to brag That's where all them pimps go See, other web shows done came and went where? Couldn't unfold or pay the rent oh. And lo and behold comes main event Finally. In other words, you're welcome oh, shit. E-V-E-N-T-L-E-V-E-L That's how we spell better, better than who? You. Getting your female wetter than you can get her boo-hoo We gather the few of the finest Put them on Skype all at the same time Which we then provide with exclusive interviews and music Wednesday, main event show Wednesday here on eventlevel.com. Awesome. Our favorite day of the week, Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. Hump day. Why are you always Uh thinking about sex? That's uh, how I'm made up, dude. She's in her sexual prime. I am. This is it, man. For like the last 20 years, I've been in my sexual prime. Clean off the bone. (laughs) Seriously. I'm serious. She is fired up like freaking... A volcano. Fire. You know? <laughs> is this true? Are you in your sexual prime, Chief? It's true. It's absolutely. I've not made any bones about that since I started on this uh, station. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. When true. is a man sexual prime? Eighteen. And Never. it's all downhill from there. Pretty it's much. Always downhill. There's a lot of napping point. after that. So, so. As... <laughs> and that was a laugh of, of truth and acknowledgement. <laughs> There's a lot of napping and uh, what with internet radio shows and all. <laughs> what kind of twisted fate is that? That guys are their horniest at 18, and then women are when women are like. 20 it's years to, later. It's to yeah. replicate in like your 30s. That's why. Because that's when you kind of meet each other. It's like your early 30s. And yeah, then but like, then the guy's like, ah, I just want to drink a beer and watch TV. Then I just want to go to work. The and guy's like, like, awesome. Fuck my hand. Make knuckle children. Because <laughs> I, I done had like seven of them. <laughs> she's done went crazy because like the last seven years she's done nothing but pushed out kids. Uh, I think I'll fuck my hand. <laughs> that was very well put, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Call him up. What are you doing? Not fucking my other hand. I'm talking to you with the other hand. On why? The why That's right. You're tossing knuckle children. Why would a male's libido peak out at eight, eighteen? Is it like just because the women get more naggy or something like that? It's like oh god. Uh, I think because uh, once the male's libido runs out, he they actually can dedicate some brain matter to something else other like, than you know procreation. Whereas the window of opportunity stays open for much much longer for a woman. She does. She you know goes to her prime in her thirties and such. Not that when she's not in her prime in 18, you know, it's not like a man cares where she is in her age. <laughs> so the <laughs> window of opportunity has to be open more. <laughs> oh, absolutely. For the, for the women than it does for the men. What? Okay. <laughs> and I mean, they, it's not, it's bad enough that we'll just about fuck anything. So, you know. Right. Including a hand, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> And as I as I had also explained on the last Trap House Rock show, which you can listen live exclusively on eventlevel.com, a watermelon as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds like Gallagher sex. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm down with that. Well, if you listen to the uh, podcast over on eventlevel.com uh, of the last Trap House Rock show, it's, it's yeah, I'll explain the situation. It's pretty well, Yeah, uh, This is like a, is this like a new trend? Because I saw on TV today that... Uh, now, compared to like 1965, there's a lot less people uh, that are married and more people that are single. And I, I went out to the club the other day, and there was these two older women. And when I say older, I don't mean old. I just mean like like Chief's age, maybe Go like on. maybe like <laughs> over 22, a little a little younger than you, Chief. Oh, okay. When I say older, I mean a little younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. These ladies that were straight cougars, and they and I see them more and more, and they are the horniest women out there. I mean, oh yeah. Well, because you know, they can't help themselves. It's you know, right. they got these hormones that make them want to pounce on their husbands, and like I said, rip them to shreds, to shreds, so to right? shreds, the bone down to the the bone in the dick. Right. <laughs> Is there My husband's like skeletal now. And just as the most interesting man in the world suggests, I also agree with his catch and release policy when it comes to cougar hunting. <laughs> catch and release. Sometimes you just policy of catch and release. Back out in the wild, you know, take them to a club and leave them there. <laughs> I can understand why women have affairs though in this midlife. You know, it's just one guy may not be enough for some people. Or you need a horny eighteen-year-old boy, right? Well, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. I say what well, you know. A pool boy. And as some recent college coaches' wives have demonstrated, it's a fine line between 16 and 18, isn't it? Uh, Very fine. Is that what she said? Fine line? I don't know. Well, she did the kid, didn't she? <laughs> Absolutely. She did it when he was 16. Did, uh... Absolutely. And and she said that there was a little bit more experience. Uh, somebody was trying to get me to go to a function, uh, I guess... The club was having a function going on, and it was like 18 and up. And I'm like, can you imagine? No, like, you shouldn't be with an 18-year-old. <laughs> no, that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> you got to at least wait till they're like 22, 23, so they've gotten out of that party stupid I'm dumb dumb stage, you know? Well, when are you getting out of yours? I have never <laughs> figured that out. can imagine that that wouldn't appeal to you. How does that not appeal like, to I you? I just started growing facial hair yesterday, and, you know... <laughs> is it like a rug? I still don't like women. I hate all y'all. I have. Oh, we, a, it's okay. We hate you too. I know. Master Phil's has a girl. He has a boo. Fuda. And, uh, oh, wow. you know. But is she a cougar? She's not a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dun, 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 dun. I was 18 in a club last weekend. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> right? <laughs> She's 18 and a half. <laughs> no. You're not. No. Very lovely girl. Hey, right, but Aww. before that, my motto was... Sex you know, before. If there's 18. hair on the playing field, you know. Huh? Play ball. <laughs> if there's grass on the field, play ball. That's what I used to say. If there's grass on the field, play ball. And if it's when I was much time, younger. Then roll it over and play in the mud. If they're crawling, they're in the right position, right? All righty now. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> anyway, guys, before I get on this crazy... You're already game, on it, baby. You're on it. It is the Christmas season. Yeah. Tis the season of giving. Tis the orgasms. season of love and happiness. Giving orgasms. Mm-hmm. Or whatever that special present that you like to wrap in a bow for your significant other. <laughs> uh... And uh, we at the main event have a great show lined up for you. I have Pigeon John out of Englewood, California. This is an uh, incredible, talented, underground rapper. I mean, I don't, I don't, even, don't know if I could call him underground, but... Um, you know, I wouldn't say anymore. He's been out for a while. He's, he has great music. He's been making great music. He just got done um, touring overseas. Nice. So the guy has a lot of followers, listeners. I'd say he's above ground now. He's above ground. Now, is he more than David Hasselhoff overseas? That's what I'd like to know. We'll have to see. Is he, did he, David, ha- David Hasselhoff open for him? You know? No, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, we do have Pigeon John coming up for you. Uh, lots to talk about. Um, oh, no, I haven't done it in a while. Let's get into some politics. We'll talk about the political race at hand and the uh, oh, good Lord. environments of politics. So, mm. you know. Get everybody, everybody's listening on the edge of the seats to get politics, huh? To get angry, you're ready to yeah. get out the sticks. Um, a lot of the current events, a lot of stuff going on in the world, man. We have a lot to talk about. Great subjects coming up on the main event. I'm joined by Rico from hatchetradio.com, Helen yeah. Ra- Razor of the Man Cave Radio Show, and, and wow. Chief 187. Yay, Chief187.com. Thank you, Helen. You, your show, have you been doing your show on uh, Hoobazoo, right? Or you've been hanging out with the Hoobazoo? I haven't started the one on Hoobazoo yet. Okay. We're hanging. Hanging so out with the Hoobazoo. Talk radio. We're, we're developing different show ideas at Hoobazoo, though. And uh, when we got something going, we'll be happy to tell you all about it, because we, we think we're a bunch of crafty people. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a nine-year-old boss man after him, so. Is that right. Before yeah. or after uh, you drink a bottle of bourbon? I don't know. Bourbon. Bourbon. I like to pronounce it like Humphrey Bogart back in the Casablanca days. Bourbon. All right, guys. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> that big work with this. The what is there? A hole in this glass? Another bourbon and soda. That's a uh, Humphrey Bogart. Who's that? Oh come on! <laughs> oh, Master <laughs> Will. I'm demoting you for master if you don't know that. Wait a I really need to know if you're kidding. Don't toy with me. Are you serious or are you, you never kidding? Never know. Hey. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'm going to get Pigeon John on the line. Can't wait to talk to this guy. Big fan of his music. Um, he's been getting it in for I bet many Pigeon years. Pigeon John knows who Humphrey Bogart was. I don't know. I bet he does, dude. You know? Let's see. <laughs> we can ask him that. We'll grill him on that. Uh, but right now, I'm going to hit you up with some hot indie music. We show the indie music love here on eventlevel.com and on the main event. So, for your listening pleasure, some great indie music. You're listening to the main event on eventlevel.com. I mean, Hamlet. You're tuned into the main event. Keep that browser locked. Party Boy Productions, man. Another hit. Ride with me. Ride with you. Ride with me. Rainy weather, dry you crazy. The summer now the sun's out, it's about 80. Let's roll around seat town in my Mercedes. And when you look in this fly, you be pulling ladies. These corny dudes with no game, yeah, they all shady. And they wonder why I only hang around ladies. Different colors and creed, you know it's all gravy. Today I cater to you, cause I'm a baller, baby. Let's hit up Al Kai, the east side lady. Then roll around downtown in my ride, lady. Top down system up, I drive 
them haters crazy Because they're catching the shine, my pearl white Sadie's I'm on 24, prone like a mice skating My profile, Pirelli's, they got these dudes hating Get even madder when they see me with the one they dating I'm 28, black, bitch, yeah, I'm the bomb, baby Baby, if you want it, you yeah. can have it You know that time to blow, just pick the spot and say so Cause it's all up to you, cause I can be that one boo The one and only in your life you wanna be true to So what you wanna do? Cause we can kick it some of the realest around The northwest of the Everett, Seattle and Tech Town If you down, we can team up together and stack bread Make rounds with the beast, not get pushed in the tents Get ahead like Bonnie and Clyde when we ride Fast lane on I-5, June 85 All you gotta do is call if you need me at all On the run, I brought some malls, man I'm down for the cause at all costs with a dime, who's top of the line, and I gotta stay fly, it's Lady Sick. Baby, if you want it, you can have it.
Thank you, Jay Beats. What up, Jesus? Yes. What up, my nigga, my man? Can I ask you a couple questions about the whole dang plan? Without an answer, you stretch out your hand With the look in your eyes that you understand All the pain, all the loss, all the confusion All the ups and the downs are now amusing And I spent all of my life rushing and hustling When I could've just been your friend And it's the end of the world as we know the end of the world as we know it We're drinking coffee in the sun All my friends, the old and young And it's okay now We're drinking coffee in the sun All my friends, the old and young And it's okay now It's okay now It's okay now. The business. The business. Hey, Ian. Yo. You remember back in high school? We used to rock that old tribe shit. Yeah. I thought I was Q tip and shit. We gonna do this for them. We gon' do it for us. Let's do it. Back in the days on the highways of Pacific, uh -huh. we used to kick routines in the presence. What's fitting? It was I, Parker, and me, Henny, the business. We kicked the mad style, so please step up off the disc. Hey, yo, Ken, you remember that routine huh? when we used to make spiffy like Mr. Clean? Um, um, a tidbit, um, a smidgen. I don't get the message, so you got to run the pigeon. You on point here, all the time, P. You on point here, hell yeah, here. all the time, yo. P. You on point here. Huh? All the time, P. Well, then grab the microphone and let your words speak. Now, here's a funky introduction of how nice I am. Tell your mother, tell your father, send a telegram. I'm like an energizer, cause you see, I last long. My crew is never, ever whack, because we stand strong. Now, if you say my style is whack, that's where you're dead wrong. I slay your body in Seattle, then push it along. You be a fool to reply that Parker ain't the man. Cause you know, and I know, that you know who I am. A special shout of peace goes out to all my pals, you see. And the middle finger goes for all you punk and see. Cause I love it when you back from seats despise me They get vets, I roll next, can't none can test me I'm just a fly, I'm see who's five for ten and very brave On job remaining, no I'm chaining cause I misbehave I come correct and full effect, have all my hoes in check And before I get the butt, the gym must be a wreck You see my aura's positive, I don't promote no junk See I'm far from a bully and I ain't a punk Extremity and rhythm, yeah that's what you heard So just clean out your ears and just check the word Check the rhyme y'all, check the rhyme y'all Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check, check it out. Check, check it out. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check the rhyme, y'all. Check, check it out. Check, check it out. Check, check it out. Check, check it out, check, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Back in the day on the highway of Pacific, we used to kick routines and the presence was fitting. It was me, Henny, Parker, where you at? The rhymes were so rumping that the brothers rolled the zag. Yo, P, you recall when we used to rock those fly routines on your cousin's block? Um, let me see. Damn, I can't remember. I received a message and you will play the center. You on point, P. All the time here. You on point, P. Yeah. All the time uh, here. You on point, P. Yeah. All the time here. Well, then play the resurrector and do that shit again. Okay, if knowledge is the key, then just show me the lock. Got the scrawny legs, but I move just like Lou Brock with speed. I'm agile, plus I'm worth your while. 100% intelligent black child. My optic presentation sizzles the rep. How far must you go to gain respect? Um, well, it's kind of simple. Just remain your own, or you'll be crazy, sad, and alone. Industry rule number 4080. Record company people still shady. So kids watching back, cause I think they smoking crack. I don't doubt it. Look at how they act. Off to better things like a hip hop form. Pass me the rock and I storm with the crew and proper. What you say, Hammer? Proper. Rap is not proper. If you call it that, then stop. What up, everybody? You're back. I'm the main event here on eventlevel.com. We just spun Lady Six, featuring Only Child, right with me. 
Pigeon John as we know it, and Parker still checking out my rhyme featuring Henry. And hold on, we got Pigeon. Hold on. <gasps> Hello. Hello, this is uh, Pigeon John calling for uh, an interview. Hey, what's it's up, Pigeon John? John? Wow. What's up? Man? It's like what? you read our minds. Oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. As no. Hey, Pigeon John. So, what well, we got? Hey. Hello. Yeah. What's up, Pigeon? You got me? Yeah, I got you, bro. Sorry, I'm late, man. That's all right. No worries, Wills, man. Can I just say for a second that the timing of that phone call was so uncanny? I almost think Mike Esterman set that phone call up. Uh, yeah. I like I like your style. I like what's <laughs> going on already. Hey, uh, right now I'd like to introduce my next guest. Uh, you just heard, heard one of his, his songs, As We Know It, All In. He's worked with big names, Eli, uh, Grouch. Uh, oh, man, did we just lose him? Oh, we did. Well, more importantly, you still have me, so. Wow. There we go. There it is. Right. What's up, John? Yo, sorry, man. I think I dropped the call, bro. No problem. Man. AT&T or something like that? What's going on? <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's, a, it's, it's a, no uh, 3G in Russia. Metro PCS. It's a Metro PCS. All right. Hey, man, I was in the middle of a big intro for you, man. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the best artists right now out there doing it, putting it down. A great lyricist, a great inspiration. If you live in all the way from Omaha to Englewood, please stand up. For Pigeon yes. John in the house tonight, Pigeon John. That's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're receiving you big time, man. Standing out, standing out, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. What's up, my people? My corn huskers, all the way to L.A., California. Much love. Much love. Much love. Don't forget, we're loving you out in the East Coast too, baby. Absolutely. Okay, well, you know, what part? What part of the East Coast? I'm a Jersey girl. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, Jersey? How you doing? I'm doing good. It's Glad you're here with us. Here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, Pigeon John, man, uh, did you you just came off this big tour, man? Right? You're just off in uh, overseas. I have a buddy out there in Germany, man. He, you know, he's stationed out there with the military. He was like, man. Pigeon John came out here. I wanted to go so bad, but I had to work, and he's all pissed off. But oh man, uh, yeah, just got to got to tour around Europe a lot this year. Mm-hmm. Um, thank goodness, not not uh, just one tour with Josh Martinez uh, in the summertime. So it's uh, it's been totally different to tour outside of the country versus uh, just in America. It's been a, a blessing, but at the same time, miss miss touring in America. Oh really? What's a uh, what was it like touring out there, man? What did you what did you like about man, it? Man, I I never been to to France before, and it is obviously a different language and stuff. So I, at first, I was like, man, I, I wonder how it's going to be perceived because maybe half or less than half of the audience might not be able to follow the lyrics. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, I think they appreciated it and got into it uh, even more than uh, in America. And uh, just the music-wise, and then the feeling, the vibe-wise, they they kind of understood human to human. Uh, it, it was like uh, if there was a language barrier, you can still understand people just with your eyes and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they got they got the jokes and the feelings behind the songs, even if they didn't catch every lyric a lot. And they're yeah. very attentive. And then the German audience, a lot more uh, English speakers out there, and. Um, they were heavy into it. They're like uh, big supporters of hip hop uh, outside of America. They're, I think they're number two in the wow. world uh, wow. next to Japan. So it, it was a. Uh, it's cool and just to be around a different different cultures of people. It was it blew blew my mind because there's so many types of different people. It's like New York City is five boroughs. Yeah. It's totally completely different from each other, and that's one city. So when you go over to uh, Germany or, or, or Switzerland or, or Belgium, how they might quote unquote look alike, but they're completely different, mm-hmm. and they will take offense to it. <laughs> no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. A lot of pride, so it, yeah. It, I, I love that, and, and, and the culture. It's just a different culture, man. And did you it say, kinda, kinda did you make, say all white huh? people look the same to me? 
<laughs> Man, I, I, you know what? I used to think that, bro. Honestly, I did, bro. I honestly did, bro. When you go over there and there's 50 different, uh, <laughs> different <laughs> countries yeah. and they all have their own individual style and their own culture. So it was beautiful. And, and even uh, with, the, with Africans um, from their individual countries being in there, it was like you see uh, black people in a different way, white people in a different way. And it's just like America is the private school of the world. And then the, the world is the public school. And yeah, it, right. it, was, it was hard to notice that until I was out of school. And then I realized, oh, my God, I'm in private school clothes. These yeah. people, you know what I'm saying? It's like showing up with the private school outfit to, uh, you know, so your whole like a uh, paradigm shift and like I mean that would blow my mind traveling across the world you actually get a worldwide view instead of just you know because I think the the America's just within its borders you know that's all we think about is yes. America and American lifestyle we don't have that global thought thought right. process yeah uh, yeah for sure I definitely had that and uh, it was cool to meet the people and down to the sound guys and and the lighting uh, girls and guys and the and the food and the, just everything was just like uh, they take pride in what they do. So uh, it just kind of blew my mind. So I, I can't. I get. I get to go back out there in March of next year, nice. um, and then I'm just uh, doing doing shows in America while I'm home. Awesome, man. Nice. Hey, let, let's talk about what you're up to now. I mean, like I just played one of your old singles, uh, as we know it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was like 2006 or when was that? Yeah, great. Still a great song. Still a classic. Uh, I know you're working on some new stuff, like the bomb. Tell us about uh, what you're um, what you're up to now. What you got going on now? Uh, right now, do, uh, promoting Dragon Slayer through touring, and then uh, working on new tunes because um, in Europe, I think next March they're going to release Dragon Slayer with three bonus cuts. Cool. So working on that as well as the new album that's. Uh, going to come out hopefully next year uh, called Encino Man. So I'm just writing those tracks right now. And uh, I think all the touring like we were talking about and uh, working with Hervé Salters from Paris and just the, the worldwide view and a lot of touring kind of affected the, the music and in, in, in my opinion in a great way. I'm having a ball writing these songs. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, I'm just uh, enjoying uh doing it my way my own sound so uh it's, it's fun it's a very unique sound you know i, I really enjoy like I, I like to see and i get a lot of this from the west coast you know a lot of refreshing uh, rap styles it's not all about uh dark things you know what i'm saying some of the stuff that you rap about is very uplifting and some of the places you go you know somebody that you know thinks they're hardcore and tough and rugged gangster probably wouldn't go you know what i'm saying like I mean, even the name Dragon Slayer. Where'd you come up with the name for that? Uh, came up with that concept, dude. Were you playing like Dragon Warrior on Nintendo, or what's up? <laughs> Man, it, it, I think it. Uh, the idea popped into my head, uh, uh, and actually came from like there was an old school movie called Dragon Slayer in the '80s. As a kid, this blonde-haired, curly dude uh, was was uh, against uh, was working with the wizard to learn how to freaking uh, kill a dragon. Yeah. Much. Uh, so uh, I, the the idea came into my head, and I was like, uh, I started laughing to myself, which is usually kind of embarrassing. I was just laughing alone <laughs> in the bathroom and shit, just looking at myself laughing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, <laughs> okay, boom. But I think when the songs started taking their own uh, turn and, and working with uh, Irve, and it, it kind of told a story of like, uh, you know, defeating. Uh, your problems, overcoming uh, the personal things in your life uh, in Dragon Slayer, whether, whether it be, you know, alcoholism mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or whether it be like, uh, 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 you know, the treating the ladies wrong. Yeah. Regardless, are breaking too many windows when you simply wanted to go out to a bar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just, the, just the little things in life. So it, it was kind of like uh, my take on um, coming into a, a second wave in my life. In a so, way. so that sounds like kind of some. Is that some like personal stuff that you? Yeah, have to, what are you talking cool. right there, man? Yeah, right yeah. There. yeah, yeah bro. Right there. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's personal, bro. What? You heard? You heard? Yeah, <laughs> yeah awesome. I, I like uh, like I look up to the far side and um mm -hmm. and all the way down to Mob Deep and the far side, and I like uh, how both of them 
uh, African Americans uh, doing doing hip hop, uh, uh, and, and they they told what they went through in the most personal way. And in Mob Deep songs, I think like it sounds dark, but a lot of the stuff is actually pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Like talking about a guy getting jumped when he goes to try to see a girl and stuff. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you can't be that serious when you're continually <laughs> high and drunk. You got to yeah. be laughing at fools. Uh, and then the far side, on the other way, you know, when you date girls from Venice Beach and surf, you know, that whole culture, it's a, it, it affects like the culture, the the weather, the beach affects the way you do hip hop. Same as if you know, if you were born and raised uh, in Queens Bridge and stuff. The snow yeah, makes you guys yeah. very serious. Yeah, serious. I mean, out in New Jersey, I don't know what they're doing with there. I mean. That's like the armpit of America, right, Chief? I don't know. Uh, oh, whoa. Hey, yo, you know what? Uh, Jersey girls are, 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 in my opinion, are very beautiful. Sing it, they're baby. They're hot and they're Sing spicy. It. And right. they smell good. They got That's attitude. It. Just enough attitude. You know what I'm saying? But we're also Just the sweetest enough. things you ever met. But, I mean, it'd be hard Woo-hoo. for me to rap about dark stuff if I could, you know, you guys got some of the dankest bud out there. You know what I'm saying? I can roll up J, <laughs> some dank bud. Go out to Venice Beach. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's your sunset? What am I? You know what I'm saying? I can't. What am I gonna rap mad about? You know? Man, I, I think uh, I think it's uh, it's it's all it's all perspective. It's all yeah. perspective. I like uh, I, I don't know why I'm on Queens right now, but Queens being the home of LL Cool J as well as Run DMC, and then as well as a tribe called Quest, a Q-Tip, where uh, you have uh, all types of different areas within that one one block radius and i think uh hip-hop is beautiful that way the same neighborhood that the far side from is, yeah. is uh where nwa is from yeah. where ice cube is from so yeah. and they probably you know the the fact that del the funky homo sapien is ice cube's cousin oh man is, that's is, crazy is, is you're very it's, it's perfect like you know we're all doing hip-hop but it's your personal experience where you can just write what you know mm-hmm. and it's all in my opinion all it's all hardcore now uh Pigeon John, I, I want to get back with you, but I got to give some of the people out there, your fans out there, we're getting tons of responses. They want to hear uh, some of your music. And right now I, okay. got, I got one of your songs, uh, The Bomb. Uh, can you explain that song a little bit and premise it? And then we're just going to jump right into it and I give everybody something for their listening pleasure. Yes, yes, indeed. I would say a uh, picture of Chuck Berry at 26 in a white brand new Cadillac dating a, a, a white 16-year-old girl from New, New Jersey. <laughs> okay? And the trunk, the, trunk, the trunk is filled with illegal activity, but it's mm. all rock and roll. Okay? Mm. Now, press now, what, play. What year is it now, now about that? Now, press press play. What year is it, bro? Yeah, because uh, I want to picture I'm the sorry. Cadillac. I want to picture okay, the Cadillac the, itself. I want to I want to picture the whole thing as okay. accurately as possible. Yeah, we got it the, here, man. The, bomb. the year the year is 2011. Turn up the music when I hop in the ride. The windows down, let the whole world see. Ain't nobody rock it like little old me. I'm the bomb and about to blow up. I'm the bomb and about to blow up. I got my drugs and my dickies and I put it on black. Banging Sinatra in a flat Cadillac. My old lady leaning out the whole window. Everybody looking when we walking slow. I'm the bomb and about to blow up. I'm the bomb and about to blow up.
time if you can Sounds good, now here's the plan Let's all sing together like we in the same band I'm the bomb and I'm about to blow up I'm the bomb and I'm about to blow up I'm the bomb and I'm about to blow up I'm the bomb and I'm about to blow up Now we gonna reach another whole new level Grabbing the light on the run from the devil Watch out! Been downtown for too long I feel the sun rising on the bin my bones I'm the bomb and I'm about to blow up I'm the bomb and I'm about to to blow up! Whoa. music right there that was awesome. oh. the bomb by your man pigeon john who we got on the line right he's now man i think of what's him up and man, that is so that, i mean that's totally different from a lot of stuff that i i've heard you listen to to see you i mean just your uh, ability to do different types of music man is just incredible it makes you such a much more complete artist man man respect for what oh, you did on thanks, that song man. man bringing it hard now, is there a video for that song? Because I didn't see a video. I was just able to listen to that. Uh, there is a video. It's on uh, YouTube. Uh, just look right. up Pigeon John the Bomb, and uh, it just comes right up. Or you can go to... Uh, by uh, Vital Films. Vital Films. And I think you can go to your website, too, right? PigeonJohn.com and check that out? Yeah. You can go right to my website as well. And, uh, right, check now, it there out. Are, actually, are there bombs blowing up in the video? Before I look at this, <laughs> am I going to see... Have you had any yes, complaints from any parent groups about violence groups or anything like that? Any complaints from any of those people? If you have bombs <laughs> blowing up in the video, there's no. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Not yet. <laughs> he's got he's, lyri- he's got lyrical bombs blowing up in the video. That's what's I going see. on. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Wells, you took your Wheaties this morning. That was yeah, awesome. he did. Uh, he ate some extra. Now, Pigeon John, <laughs> man. Uh, I, look, let me get this out of here. You know, what I'm saying I come from a mixed breed. I'm half. Uh, I'm Blasian. I'm half Korean, oh, half okay. black. You know what I'm saying? I got a little mud Perfect. in me. And uh, you're, you're <laughs> mixed too, man. You come from a mixed family, right? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And, you, I mean, you started out living in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And then when you were young, you left Omaha and went to Engle, Englewood, California. Yeah. I mean, yes. Maybe you might have been living next to Ice Cube. I don't know. Tell me about yeah. that. Tra- <laughs> tell me about that transformation, <laughs> how, that, how, how that was. Was that a huge shock right. to you, and how'd you adjust to that? Oh, man, uh, well, one, uh, my, mom, my mom is uh, half Danish and, and German, mm-hmm. and uh, my dad's black from uh, Kansas City. I don't know his name, though. He might be Prince. He might be Morris Day. Not sure. <laughs> uh, so anyway, she got pregnant, yo. I would hope that it would be like Richard Pryor. <laughs> That's probably look- who I'd be. And, woo, now you're talking. Or JJ from Good Times. Who knows, man? It was a, <laughs> it was a wild time. You do look like you know. Prince every, Day, I say that for sure. You do look like she was. She was young. She was in love. Everybody was going crazy. It was the seventies. You know. You know how it is. So anyway, the sweet mother, my sweet mom, uh, she moved us three out to uh, California at the age of uh, two or three, like right before kindergarten, and uh, we moved a lot. Like it, I was very used to, like in the middle of the night, like. She would throw some sheets on the floor and say, it's time to go. Either it's a, whether an eviction notice or a new place to stay or you're staying at aunt's house. So I was used to moving a lot. Um, but when we settled down in Inglewood um, after moving back to Colorado Springs, actually, for the fourth grade year, just went back uh, real quick, came back. And uh, the only shock to me, it wasn't uh, uh, the the, uh, the culture or anything like that. It was uh, it was the first time I heard hip hop music on the radio. Oh. It was on KDAY, this LA station, and when we, and it was before rap radio, so it was like they would be playing uh, uh, Madonna, the yeah. first record, down to uh, the uh, NWA. Uh, nice. And uh, even even a little Human League, so it was like basically '80s pop when hip hop was like 
it, baby. So, I mean. All that stuff. So, I, I think that, that blew my mind. The music, I remember hearing it, uh, African Bambata uh, with Planet Rock right. about uh, rock cocaine. And uh, the 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 song was like, it just as a kid, you're just a sponge. So I, I fell in love with hip hop and uh, the the culture and and, and uh, everything just kind of became uh, who I who I was. I kind of found my calling, if you will. So that was the big wake up thing. Now let me ask you this: Now you're sitting in Englewood, you know, what I'm saying somebody from the hood cru- cruising in their low rider, you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. Jerry mm-hmm. Curl, Easy E, Jerry Curl, big sunglasses, gold teeth. <laughs> Now, where they listen to K Day, you know, blasting some K Day, then all of a sudden some Madonna came on, and did they, did they keep <laughs> up and they keep bumping? No, bro, they they could afford to buy cassette tapes. Oh, okay. ah. So they, if they if they were bumping anything, it was Houdini. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> out the windows in the cars I mean there were probably six people in the whole neighborhood who had a car that wasn't their moms so uh, so in general that never happened but me I grew up I got into skating at the same time yeah. and my, bro- my brother was a football and basketball player and then uh, uh, my friends we were into skating and hip hop so we weren't gangsters at all uh, but we grew up our best friends that we played uh, football or just hung out at the park they were quote unquote in the gang, but it was so close to us that it wasn't. No one was in a gang. It was just like, uh, this is our neighborhood. Your and neighborhood. We were we were more influenced in, on the new music and what girls we wanted to have sex with, but we <laughs> weren't having sex. But that was we we were too caught up in neither was master in that. Like you know what I'm saying? We yeah. just like girls. Uh, you know, my sister was, you know, good looking. So I always dealt with, you know, dudes coming up. Like, hey, what's up with your sister? That vibe. And, and uh, it was just like we were too young to even notice what a gang was uh, or what a blood was. We Everyone said, you know, what's up, blood? Yeah. That was just like what you would say. And I think uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm happy that I grew up that way where there's not like a, a, a difference or a notice and in LA, everyone is the same, and uh, whether they're banging or not, it's still Los Angeles. Hey, Pigeon John, I have a question. This is Chief 187. I'm the Jersey girl, and I was just curious sure. after what I just heard you talk about. And, and an honest question Was music then a way of getting chicks and initially, or did you know you had this calling to write, to perform, to get your message out there in that medium? Or did it start off like a lot of rock and rollers where it's just, oh, I got to get the chicks, man? How do you think your, now, your path went? I think uh, because I got into skating at the same time as hip hop, it, it was always about pulling off the trick. It wasn't okay. about ever getting girls. It was just basically about uh, doing bomb music or okay. making a uh, beat loops the best way. Or if you're if you're beatboxing, it kind of like the the competition was the competition. I think was the biggest uh, pull and trying to make uh, the freshest rap and, and put together the freshest uh, uh, you know routine. And plus, I was b-boying at the same time. So if it got the girls, one I didn't notice because I was a, I was kind of a nerd. <laughs> and then two man it's just the music was like I was on my headphones and it was just like my life uh-huh. like I would just listen to one song over and over I had this cassette tape and I had Boys in the Hood from the radio on loop on one whole side mm-hmm. and then you'd flip it over you know what have Human League I'm Only Human I'm only human born to make mistakes <laughs> oh my god I love it so I would just be bumping that all day, and I couldn't. I couldn't. My mom couldn't afford to buy a record, and the very first cassette she ever bought me was the Miami Vice soundtrack, son. Oh, uh, what you know about that, son? <laughs> classic, man. Huh? You know that's that's funny. I mean, that's I remember cassette tapes, and uh, that's what I used to do. I mean, like you had K Day, you just pop, pop in the cassette tape and just hit record, and that's how I was making mm-hmm. my mixtapes back in the day, man. That's right. Like, all day, I mean, it was it was kind of like the uh, uh, digging in the loops or, or digging digging in the crates, like as far as it was hours of listening to the radio with your hand on the pause button to get like those gems, and whoever caught that gem, like a Houdini song or whatever, it was always me and B twice, like showing each other the newest song yeah. uh, from you know Beast. I remember when I, when we heard the Beastie Boys as a kid, 
mm-hmm. before we knew they were white, bro, because there was no video. <laughs> so I, ju- I thought they were like, you know, oh, shoot, from Brooklyn? Oh! And we all thought that, and we were actually shocked when the picture showed up. Like, all of us kids were like, ew. We were like, what? Like, it, we were taken aback. Not in a bad way. Just saying, yeah. like, as ratio. It was Surprised. Just to experience uh, hip-hop that way was, uh, was a blessing, I think. It's wow. kind of like when you went to, like, overseas, and you're like, these guys like hip-hop? You know what I'm saying? I thought they were into, like, Ramstein or something over here. And David Hasselhoff. Yes. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> did David yes, Hasselhoff indeed, open, man. open for you, by the way? I forgot to ask that question. Yeah. No, yeah, he did, man. Him and his family, <laughs> daughters, they all uh, came to the show, and uh, we all partied hard afterwards. Sweet, right. sweet. Cheeseburgers for everyone. Uh, yes, indeed. Just got a um, message in, a message in, uh, email in, and uh this is, comes from Blaze One. Uh, he wanted to talk about the song you did off Eli's Grey Crow album, Whirlwind. Uh, what was kind of your thoughts and, and what, you know, what was your mindset going into that song right there? Oh, man, that was one of my favorite sessions. Um, Eli was going through a lot as well as myself, but we were kind of on... Uh, I, I would be, I can be honest, I would say that we, at one point earlier on in our career, I was on a the quote-unquote light side and he was on the quote-unquote dark side um and i think when we were we uh, recorded that song we flipped uh sides and um he he uh, he and i was i was just in a mind state of like uh the way my life was going i was basically like you know f the world and on that little uh zone, oh zoning out you know zoning yeah. out kind of vibe and i think uh it was just like two dudes' perspective. Him with the with the woman and, and a new relationship in a good way. Where it was almost scary how good it was going. It was almost mm-hmm. like a whirlwind. Like when she walked into the room, you didn't see anything but her. Like it was she represented. Okay, here we go. And then on me, my whirlwind was in my mind and uh, and you know being held you know in my apartment and stuff. And, the, and I, I didn't see anybody but myself. And a very, very cold, cold uh, world yeah. where no one existed except myself. So it, that I think that was my role in, and uh, that was his role. That was Those incredible are, tandem, incredible like yin and yang mm-hmm. collab. I mean, that's yeah. what you call a collaboration. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and I think the, the best thing about that song is that we were writing about what was actually happening. And him with his new girlfriend, um, and then me and my like, uh, you know, you get you get mad at the world and stuff, you know, you start <laughs> buying <laughs> buying stuff and and hiding out and stuff, and then thinking that uh, everyone's against you and stuff. So I think that that that's where I was at, and that's where he was at, literally. So. Well, how did you good. get released from that, Pigeon John? Oh man, I think uh, after time, and uh, I would just say my friends. Yeah. You know, personally speaking, like uh, people voicing up and saying, hey, dude, uh, what's up with you, bro? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and you and weren't defensive? Really, really, what? You, you weren't defensive about that shit? Oh, at first, of course, of course, uh, of course I was. And I, I think, like, when I let my guard down and kind of let um, people, you know, you start receiving, when you, I started just receiving love that was out there. Like, and then the door started opening up again and I started, you know, letting people inside and, and being a good friend and stuff like that. And then that, that's what kind of got me uh, out of the, that uh, funk, that cloud. Nice. Spoken like Gandhi, man. Hey, Blaze, also, Blaze, Blaze One also <laughs> wants to know if you're going to do another collab with Eli. Are you, look, are you guys been talking? Oh, nothing planned right now. Um uh, with the with the latest record he has with Amp Live, uh, but we always keep each other in mind, like uh, with our with our records. So hopefully, maybe that'd be a. I think maybe on my next record he can uh, uh, rock a song again. I think that'd be dope. It's been a, every time with Grouch or Eli or any of the legends. It's always been like a, a huge deal to me because I look up to those dudes, and, and then on top of that, I think their quality and C's. Definitely. Tell Is there anybody? Oh, I'm so sorry, Dester Wills. Uh, probably asking the same question here. Who are some of the people that you are working with that you really attracted to? I mean, you're out there with Lyrics Born. Um, 
tons of these incredibly uh, well respected and you know i use the term loosely underground artist uh mm -hmm. true lyricist who are some of the people that uh came along and influenced you and who are some of the people you love working with man i, I would say my favorite rap group right now is uh dark time sunshine mm -hmm. um and uh, uh, if you don't know about them, they're heavy, heavy. They only have one record out. It's killer. And I'm going to uh, do a song on their next record coming out. Um, mm -hmm. And they're on a fake four, this label out of Chicago. And um, that's that's really dope. And then with uh, with touring, I met uh, this singer, uh, Ben Uncle Soul. He's kind of like a Ray Charles young dude uh, uh, from Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love to work with him like on a song on the next record. He's a good, good brother, mm -hmm. and um, man, there's so so many good things out there. There's a uh, even down to the the West Coast Far Far East movement, Hyper Crush on the on the commercial pop side. Uh, really good dudes and and working hard and and uh, making music that uh, gets the ladies dancing, mm -hmm. <laughs> which. You're tuned into the main event. Keep that browser locked. Eventlevel.com. Join eventlevel.com. Too big. TV.com. Promote, promote yourself. It's bmradio.com. Join the mayhem. mayhem. MME radio.com. Make, make, make money. money. Hatchetradio.com. We support music.com. Miss LP. Management.
Welcome everybody. We're back on the main event here on eventlevel.com. Just heard Pigeon John, dude, it's on. And uh, that yeah. song got that song got me feeling high as hell. Like I smoked a big one. <laughs> it was a great song. I, I liked was, it. Uh, yeah. It's grooving. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it just felt like I don't know. A little felt like a little Beatles in there, and a little. It's a little everything. This is like a song I would love to smoke a big, big joint to, and just cruise down. You know what I'm saying? Feel some breeze, top down. Uh, Please do. <laughs> a little bit about that song, dude. It's on. Oh man, you, I think what you're talking about is right. Right, pretty much uh, is the uh, hammer on the nail, hit the nail on the, on the head about that song. Uh, just like um, you know, it's some touring Motel Six status. You and your friends watching cable. You're in a very small town. It does not not a whole lot of parties going on. So you have friends come over and you're just partying with your friends, pretty much. But then at a certain point, you think, "Oh my God, this is amazing." <laughs> you know what? It's, you know what's funny about that whole thing you just said? Like you know, what I'm saying I sometimes I get out there, I'm busy, I'm on the road all the time, I never get to get home. You know, what I'm saying, uh-huh. and then you know, my girl wants to go out to the club, and I'm at the club, and you know, the music's dancing, and people are shoving me everywhere and beers are spilling and you know what I'm uh-huh. saying? bitches are fighting and, and it's just like the best times of my life is like when I get to go relax you know with with my buddies man you know what I'm saying I'm relaxing with my buddies in a little situation that I've known for a long time we can spit right. jokes that we all get and it's just such a great feeling to have those friends with you I mean those are some of the moments that I you know that are very cherishing to have it's just those little moments that you you know, you don't need a lot of fancy shit to enjoy that. It's just, Boom. it's on right there. Yep. So, totally, totally Here can relate, man. Totally, totally can relate. Uh, oh yeah. What we got for you coming up next, man? We got a uh, a game show we have for you. Uh, we're gonna try it out today. So, <laughs> you with your experience traveling overseas and being here, I think you'd be very good at it. Uh, but first, okay. I want to talk about how you got your name. And what I found out is that uh, Jesus hit you up, rolled up to you in uh, Englewood, yes, and uh, gave you a dead pigeon. Yeah. And he said, "He what he said? He, he uh, said uh, something like butter on toast plus the Holy <laughs> Ghost." And then before you know it, the pigeon woke up and flew away. And I was like, "What is going on?" And then he handed me a Budweiser, and he said, "You know what? Just relax, bro. You're in heaven." And then that really freaked me out even more. Are you sure this was uh, Jesus, or maybe uh, a guy with a uh, Jesus-like beard and sandals? It might have been a local homeless bro. You know, as far as I know. But if uh, if you're in the right mind state, uh, I thought it was Jesus. And uh, yeah, that's what happened, bro. Uh, is it, that's where you got the name Pigeon John from? Is that right? Yes. Yes. Now, yes. <laughs> let's. Uh, now, really, I, I, I think the I found that the real reason, or the real reason, what was the real? How you really got the name Pigeon John? I know that, the that real, a, real reason. That, that was a, yeah. Oh, you know, I love so, so, the, okay, Hermosa Beach. My friend, I was named Prospero Mantis, yeah. and I was looking for a rap name as a kid. I was like, man, I was going by J Bone, uh. Uh, <laughs> which I like. Oh, you know what? I, I, I might have should have, you know, might have should have would have. J Bone. Oh, no, no. But I've been in. J Bone doesn't suck. J Bone doesn't suck, man. And uh, the, 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 I was like, man, what should I be named, bro? What, what's what's going on? You got a cool name and stuff. And he was like, man, you should be called uh, Chicken John, bro. And I think he was playing around because there, there was this uh, dub artist named Chicken Chest that he loved and we, we always laughed at the name. Mm-hmm. And then his mom overheard us talking in the kitchen, and she poked her little head in, and she said, you don't look like a chicken. You look more like a pigeon. They started laughing more, and then it was a nickname. And it never left. Pigeon <laughs> John sounds than better than Chicken John. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> so true. The dove, the dove of the city. <laughs> uh, okay, man. Uh... And uh, I wanted to, one thing I, uh, else I wanted to put in there. Do you still, I mean, like, you're a lot of your roots, you had a lot of spiritual stuff. Are you, you're a very spiritual person, right? You're very. 
Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, not it's kind of like may, probably the way I was raised, and then later on through uh, through life experiences, just out kind of out in the streets. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm as spiritual as as everybody is. I think uh, and like that connected uh, connected to a um, a higher power and uh, what I call God and. And uh, how when, when when it gets really really tough, I think that a uh, guy gets uh, personal and he come comes down to help you. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, that's awesome. all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that have, I think, that are fighting spirituality right now. You know, what I'm saying they have a different way of thinking. They're fighting it and. And I think it's better when you embrace your spirituality, your soul, and, uh, you know, live life like that. Live life to the fullest. Uh, that's indeed. why, sure. That's why uh, I particularly like another thing about the name Pigeon. To me, there's the implication, you know, that a, a pigeon is the messenger. He's going to get the message there. Yeah, I've heard, I've Cause heard they, Because the homing pigeons. <laughs> wow. That's yes, the homing <laughs> pigeons are highly reliable. Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlin just blew my mind, and now I think of you totally different. Dude. This, the messenger. My, Pigeon. my mind is on the ground right now. It's got blown out of my head, and <laughs> my mind is on the floor. <laughs> wow, Hamlin. Wow. Hamlin Razor has that effect on people. Hello. <laughs> Was All that right. the first time he spoke, bro? This is wild. <laughs> he, no, it's not. He likes oh, to get man. in, you know what I'm saying? He likes to... You know, go in hard and leave strong. Go in hard, leave strong. There it is. There it is, bro. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pigeon, we're going to play a little game we have on you. It's new yes. event. All right. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I hope you got your game face on. Like I said, I got this, this is going to be a something that I think you're going to be well-versed because you just got done going overseas. And, you know, mm-hmm. you got to experience, you know, outside the U.S., out in Europe, and back here at home traveled all over uh the u.s and uh, abroad so here we go this is a little segment i like to call is it germany or is it florida (laughs) (laughs) oh nice here we go that's funny a bunch of questions i want to have them answered immediately all right all right go we're gonna ask you uh some questions (laughs) here and uh, right. I gotta, you got to tell if the headline is German or from Florida. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, a teacher is suspended for using a hose to clean student who soiled himself at school. Is that German or is that Florida? Here you go. Florida. Everybody else, so here we go. Pigeon John says Florida. The answer is correct. Oh! Yes. Whoa! Man, it's unstoppable. School officials have punished a Tampa Air teacher accusing of using a water hose to clean up a pre-kindergarten student who soiled himself. 50-year-old Stephanie Wilson was suspended 10 days without pay at Finellas County School Board, said she went to the side of the building, donned a pair of gloves, used a low-pressure hose to wash the student on October 28th. When she finished, uh-huh. she put the student's pants on and went to the classroom where she put a clean diaper on. Hmm. Oh. Do you think that's worth her getting suspended? I mean, who knows what kind uh, well, of... Not, now that I read it, I, you know, shoot. Like, if it, you know, sometimes, you you know, I have a little girl. I have a, I have a little baby. And sometimes, hey, if it, if, the, if, the, if it goes crazy down there, bro, you got to figure something out. Dip her in, a, dip her in the sink sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Is that the Especially technique? If you got, you know... Yeah, I mean, if you, if it's busy and you're kind of going crazy, you're like, oh shoot, I got you know clean it up real quick. I mean, do you that's pull what off the the, uh, the diaper and there's like a mud diaper underneath? Is that what you're saying? Ooh, oh my gosh, <laughs> more than that, bro. I'm talking about a mud slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had one of those. Talking, tonight talking about sometimes, sometimes it droops down the pants and gets gets into the oh. floor. It's so wet and yeah. slick, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm throw up. All true. That just happened to me tonight. Never, My I'm, God, I can't believe you're talking about it. I don't know if I, I'm never having kids. I can't. Oh man, I'm so cute. Kids to, I wanted kids till you told me about the poop. I don't. Yeah, bro, it's no joke. You know, you've heard that, right? Poop happens. It does. And when it it's your kid, you don't give a crap. You really don't. Yeah, that is. They don't. They think it's a great time. They're never <laughs> bothered by it. They're having fun. They're having fun regardless. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. All right, here we go. Round two. 
Okay. Is it Germany or is it Florida? Here we go. Round two, here comes the question. A uh, hundred snakes found in a hotel. hundred snakes? Is it Germany or is it Florida? Here we go. That's some, that's some German stuff. I'd say Germany. Wow, that is correct. You are good. Son of a bitch. You are incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. Hey, yo, uh, me, uh, Ger- German people are kind of crazy in a good way, bro. They party hard. And if you party snakes. so hard that you wind up with 100 snakes in your hotel room, it means someone's having sex. <laughs> German sex is, uh, yeah. Something's going in. Is that yep. like American sex with subtitles? What's that? American sne- sex is like missionary, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She- sheets no, no. over, underneath the sheets. Oh. No. German sex is above the sheets, lights on, and 100 snakes. Nice. That's right. It's <laughs> odd. You know what German sex is? Honesty. Honesty. Woo! Baby, I want to have 100 snakes in a bit. Okay. Whatever you want. Yeah, sure. Da. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Man, I love Germany. I love I love. <laughs> 100 snakes found in turn me on. 100 snakes found in the Cologne Hotel. Cologne police were faced with the snake. Hell yeah. On Saturday after 100 snakes, 70 <laughs> tortoises, said you were right. and 20 bright colored frogs were found in the hotel room. Oh, you didn't say anything about the frogs. Mm. Man. Mm. Hello. According to police, hey, yo, you, yeah. you want a party? You want a party? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Germany. Wow. They know how to party. <laughs> According to police, three Chinese guests smuggled the animals into the room in their luggage. Chinese. And, uh, they got out, man. Wow. Okay. Yeah, they were Chinese yeah, nationals. That's, that's the second freakiest uh, culture right there. Chinese people. You know what I'm saying? Behind yeah. Them, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah, man. I'm winning. Okay, here we go. This is this is the third <laughs> I'm round. I'm of it's all about that. Is it Florida or is it is it Germany? Here we go. Round now. Three. Here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, woman has sex in intersection and refuses to put clothes on. Mm-hmm. Do, do. Hmm. Germany. Is this? Florida I would think that happens Germany? every day in Germany. You think this happens every day in Germany? <laughs> Nearly like, every day know. in Germany. Yeah. Germany. Oh, it's it's Florida. Florida. Oh. 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 And was she over 60 years old? No. Yeah, I hope She was not. a 32-year-old woman in Niceville, oh. Florida, early this week. 32-year-old woman and her boyfriend stopped yeah. in a 1998 Mitsubishi SUV in the middle of an intersection. The two, two proceeded to make some whoopee, whatever that is, mm. in a car. Uh, the, pair <laughs> may, <laughs> the pair may have gotten away with it, but then they decided to both walk out of the car completely nude. Uh, Hello. Police Excuse arrived at... Police arrived and said, everybody had already seen me naked. I don't have to get dressed now. Ooh. Wait, Cameron, weren't you in Florida recently? Was that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Is he gone? Okay. Wait, you handling? Okay. <laughs> Look, here's... <laughs> here's the kicker to the story, which yes. totally describes a woman's mindset and everything that a woman's about. This embodies everything. Oh, I love of when you generalize. Dress. Uh, she got dressed and left the scene, but she decided to come back. She popped a squat and urinated in the driveway of the woman who called the police. Who then started yelling at the woman to rat her out. What city was this, bro? Niceville, Florida. Niceville. Niceville, hello. Wow. <laughs> From the <night>. I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay. We're, we're going to give you uh, your two for one, and I'm going to let you have one more. Two for one. three. He's two for three. three. Two okay. for three, sorry. Two for three. Yeah. Pretty good. Let's see what you got. One more thing for you. Let's see how, how you come out. Let's see you come out a winner. I'm pulling for you, Pigeon John. Here All we right. go. Here's the last question. Is it Florida or is it Jeremy? The last round. Here we go. Here on the main event, eventlevel.com, Pigeon John goes for the first <laughs> ever title. Wow, it's gonna be impressive. I'm setting it up, man. We're gonna uh, we're gonna have to <laughs> set a trophy or something like Listen this. Listen to him set this up like Chuck Llewellyn or something. This is gonna be. Let's like, do it. Here we go. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay. The final question here: Is it Germany or is it Florida? Will Pim, Trouble, John get it? Oh, I'm on the edge. I'm grinding my teeth right now. I can't believe. It. All right, here we go. <laughs> final round. Is it Germany or is it Florida? Half dressed okay. drunken cop. Found in intersection. Having sex with a 32-year-old woman. 
Is it Florida? Is it Germany? Oh, uh, Germany. <gasps> oh, it's, it's Florida. I told oh, you. Dang it, I was Florida. going to say Florida. I'm uh, sorry. That you got to give him a tiebreaker. Uh, oh man. The cops discovered off-duty <laughs> Miami Dade police officer Fernando Villa passed out in his own patrol car in the intersection of West Candle. Uh, oh man! The police man. Uh, he was dressed in his special response team uh, unit, and he was found drunk in the intersection. Wow. Okay. Wow. It's the That's holidays. Okay. You can't, you know. Hey, I, it doesn't matter. This is our first ever. Is it Germany? Is it Florida? I'm just declaring you already a winner. You are the champion. <laughs> you're a champion. It's you, baby. Until somebody tries to come challenge you, but they are going to have a tough time. I mean, it is tough. That is tough, man. <laughs> it is tough. Is it Germany or is it Florida? You don't know. It is. You really don't know. No, no. I mean, oh, you go overseas, it's different. But when you compare it to like a state like Florida, it's hard. Very hard. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, John, man, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. We got to have you back on, man, and uh, it's been a, a great interview. Can I find you on Twitter or Facebook or anything? I want to find you. Yeah, you can. You can uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, do the pigeon at do the pigeon. Nice. Yes. Nice. I like that. <laughs> Please, yeah, follow. I'm going to go do the pigeon right now. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we got to, I mean, don't fall. I just try to find Pigeon John as Pigeon John, and it was like this crazy, bald, white guy. Yeah. <laughs> like a serial no, killer. That's not me. <laughs> do the not pigeon. Me. Twitter, do the pigeon. Do the pigeon. Yeah, follow me. Uh, before we go, also, do you have any shout outs or thank yous? I'd like to give a big shout out to my crew, LA Symphony, uh, Quantum Projects, and uh, love and respect to Living Legends and Dark Time Sunshine. Awesome, awesome. And uh, can I also, I got to get a shout out, man. We're big fans, big supporters of you, you on eventlevel.com here at the main event. Can I get a shout out to eventlevel.com and the main Hell event? Oh, yeah. And the main event? Eventlevel.com and the main event? Yeah, heck yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? Hi. What's going on, y'all? This is Pigeon John from L.A., California, and you were tuned in to the main event. You know how we do... Awesome, man. Awesome. Woo! You know, I, was, I almost expected you to do like a Birdman. Like the little... <laughs> I don't even do that, bro. I let, I let them do that. You let them do that? <laughs> yeah, bro. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been an awesome interview. Uh, we love you here at VanLevel.com. Like I said, big fans, a lot of supporters. Uh, and uh, can't say anything you know, more about the level of lyricists that you bring to the table. Your style is so refreshing and so different um, from all the songs we heard. Uh, Dude, It's On, The Bomb, all great music that you put out, all quality music. And, uh, and fun. And fun, man. Fun. You bring the fun. Thank you. Thank you, eventlevel.com. Woo! <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, Thank you. We're going to go out on your song, so I just want you to premise it, and we're going to go straight into it. And uh, thank you for a lovely interview. The song is Before We're Gone. Tell us about the song, and then we're going to jump straight into Pigeon John and, and his madness and his great music. Here we go. Blah, blah. The song Before We're Gone is about uh, enjoying life now before we pass. And uh, usually it's the 2020 hindsight, but let's turn that hindsight into foresight before we're gone. Treat your lady right. I spend six months on the road Watching the trees through the window Singing my songs to packed in shows Girls fill the whole front row Oh, but it don't mean a thing mm -hmm. The scene's insane on the low Bathroom stalls packed full of snow Anything you want is yours in the go Suicide girls at the door Oh, but it don't mean a thing If you're not here
If you're not here, hey, this ain't another love song. I'm trying to figure out what's right or wrong before we're gone. Oh, let's stand outside of all regret and share another cigarette. Seems the party never ends Hundred dollar tab bills So call friends They promise and smile and laugh And pretend that they all want to share the syringe But it don't mean a thing mm -hmm. I sing this song from inside Behind the walls, behind all the pride For fear that I'll never realize That you are the prize And it don't mean a thing If you're not here this ain't another love song I'm trying to figure out what's right or wrong Before we're gone Oh, hey Let's stand outside of all regrets And share another cigarettes Before we're gone Oh, you go ahead and reapply your chapstick Take my last sip Before we go oh. What up everybody, you're back Main event, midlevel.com You just heard Pigeon John mm -hmm. A legend my life. boyfriend, Pizzant John. Don't mince words, baby. New boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Uh, oh, man. That guy, this is some great music, man. Some great music. Mm -hmm. Totally into it. Um, great stuff, man. Uh, what I want to go into is uh, let's get into some different headlines of the day. Here we go. Let's, let's close it strong. Uh, <laughs> some new interesting facts. Mm -hmm. Here's something I found interesting: teen drinking and smoking is down. Cigarettes is down. Dr teens drinking and smoking cigarettes is down, but marijuana smoking is gone up. Well, Rico's campaign to get teenagers to smoke pot must be sweeping the nation. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, if, all, yeah. if all you have to do is go to a doctor and say you suffer from anxiety and you need a prescription of medical marijuana. Are they really prescribing teenagers, though, this? I, I don't see that. Uh, it just generally makes it easier to get. I think uh, we, we live in a, regarding marijuana, mm -hmm. a society that's sort of loosened our views regarding marijuana and it just made it more generally acceptable. But I saw, also saw the same USA Today uh, study results, the data there. And uh, while I do consider that publication to be essentially a rag, uh, <laughs> I did see the data. And uh, I'm wondering how much they really know about the prescription drug use that goes on illegally uh, with the youth today. There is. I mean, it's, you know, I don't want to... Uh, you know, promote young people's drug use, but I think that, and I don't want to say you're choosing the lesser two evils, but you know, more damaging I think to a kid would be a cigarette over pot smoke. I would definitely say, and drinking also. I think drinking, and you know, if I were to choose the lesser of the three evils, it would be. Uh, smoking pot I think uh, a lot more deaths are related to alcohol and a lot more deaths are related to smoking cigarettes and cancer uh, um, but you know I mean you gotta look at the bright side of things damn it <laughs> All right. yeah okay. yeah I know that, that the pot smoke is up I, that didn't surprise me the pot smoking being up that didn't surprise me at all I guess I was a little bit surprised that alcohol use is down though uh, and that is good news. Of course, of course. 
Oh, there's no high school keggers going on? What the hell is going on, man? Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of nerds growing up. I'd be beating these people up in the hallway. Uh, here's something. <laughs> this is well, season... What? Bullying, bullying is now frowned upon in our culture. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but there's a zero tolerance on bullying, so you'd be freaking in jail. <laughs> That's what you'd be. Or s- suspended or... What a <laughs> police society, bullcrap society we have. I mean... Hey. I understand bullying is bad, but come on, man. Buck up. Tell your kid to say, hey, I'm getting bullied, and say, <clears throat> if you don't take care of the bully, I'm going to bully you. And quit being a little puss and handle the bully. Or if you want me to, I'll go handle the bully, but quit. You know, uh, just because, I mean, I just don't understand the whole bullying thing. I don't. Sorry. Am I wrong for that? What do you mean? What don't you understand about it? I mean, why it's such a big deal right now, publicly becoming such a big deal and so many bullying cases? I guess there's like cyberbullying and crap like that, you know. Some people like killed themselves. Yeah, teach your your daughter not to send nude pics. Say, if you send nude pics, they're going to show up on the internet and your life's going to be ruined. There. Yeah. Yeah, because teenagers always listen to their parents. They don't listen. Don't be coming crying and don't be be a little wuss and take the easy way out and, and kill yourself. We can deal... Talk to your kids and tell them if you have a problem, we can deal with this problem. You really? Know? And well, it's not. And if you're getting bullied, talk to me about it and we can handle this problem together. You know, but I don't want to rely on the system, on the system to police schools and stuff. I want parents to step up and, and be a part of this. I don't want people policing bullies. I mean, bullies is a part of life. It's part of a, it's something that will not be addressed with. Police, it's something that'd be addressed within the culture and society. Exactly. I'm I'm glad, really glad to hear you say that, Will. Really. I mean, because that honestly, that's what the whole thing's all about. And we have a free republic. The question is, can we hold on to it? And if the more and more you let, you know, through political correctness, I've been a long believer that stuff like this, this hypersensitivity to the the bullying that's going on, and like you just said, relying on some, I don't know quasi system that's somehow supposed to exist some quasi system of political correctness and justice for the people etc blah 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 loads of bullshit and instead of taking care of your own lives like you say uh, have the individual accountability to uh, at some point you have to stand up for yourself because i do believe that as a result of political correctness we have these kids coming out of schools today uh who don't hold themselves accountable for their actions because they don't know that in real life there really are winners and losers everyone doesn't get mm-hmm. a participation trophy mm-hmm. just for participating you know what i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, and you learn that stuff by letting kids live life and uh more and more that you give power to the government more and more you're giving them the power to make decisions like that for you so i'm really glad to hear you say that wills <laughs> I mean, really, let's get out of this. Start of a bromance. What's going on here? Uh, I mean, let's get out of a police state. You don't want the police controlling your whole life. Absolutely. I mean, you're starting to get into borders of moral police, you know? Right. Am I going to get, you know, is it going to be like a demolition man where I get fined for cussing? You know, I say fuck and a ticket comes out. Like, I don't want to live in that society. I live in that society because my nine year old son makes me accountable for everything I fucking oh, say. You got, <laughs> so no. you got a swear jar at home? I got to put a quarter in the swear no, jar. No, because I'd be freaking broke more than I already am. So no, we don't play that way. He just gives me lectures. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. That's great. But now your kid, <laughs> at least your kid is mature enough. And you've, he, obviously you've done a good job raising him for him yes. to recognize that and, and see that. And that's all these, other, this all these kids need is some direction. I, you know, like, what if a kid is getting beat up by his dad at home? That's all he knows. Mm-hmm. He goes in the school and bullies this kid. Right. So he now, feels good about himself. Mm-hmm. So he feels good by himself because that's all he's learned through his parents at home. Right. And then you throw his ass in jail. Oh, yeah, that's problem solved. That kid's going to be really fixed after he Well, here's a couple <laughs> interesting ones for you that are related to this. Well, I don't think we had time a couple shows ago. I was going to bring this up. I heard, I read two very interesting stories in the Boston, both of them in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Mm-hmm. Um, one where a nine-year-old boy was uh, suspended for saying that his teacher was cute. Nine years old or maybe seven years old said his teacher was cute. Uh-oh. And they suspended him for two or three days for sexual harassment. Harassment. And the mom of the child was like livid. She's like, you know, he's freaking nine years old. He doesn't know what freaking sexual harassment is yet. Right. You know what I mean? He doesn't have sex 
Yeah. And even if he does, you know, at what point do you stop being so fucking hypersensitive about everything? You just oh, flip out a nine-year-old saying the teacher's cute, right? So that was one. And the other one was, I think it was a seven-year-old who was, was being bullied um, by a bigger kid and did at one point take matters into his own hands by kicking the bully in the nuts. Yeah. And seven-year-old who kicked the bully in the nuts got suspended for three days for sexual harassment. They, they actually made that a sexual harassment charge for kicking the other kid in the nuts. Yeah. And the kid who was standing up for himself finally after being bullied. So there's another example of the political correctness and the policing of everything gone awry because you let justice take care of itself, then it will. But you, you put some sort of establishment's fingers into it and it's going to get it all fucked up. First one is awful, like you said. First one is awful. Second one, maybe that kid had some like uh, influential parents. I don't know. That sounds like a, you know, an elitist oh, sure. of the school or something. And they, sure. you know, let's kick this kid out of school because his parents have donated some money to the school. We can't kick him out. We can get wherever we're. I don't know. That's all conspiracy theory hearsay, but <laughs> exactly right. And. <laughs> Stupid, stupid rich kids. I hate them all. Just kidding. I don't. I, uh, uh, <laughs> have you ever met somebody uh, like that? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's up a generation of people that envy the rich instead of wanting to emulate the rich. So this is, you know, it's just all a product of, again, this political correctness gone awry. Well, here we go. Like, here's something that runs wrong with the system. Let's talk about, uh, you know, bring it up. It's been in the news. It comes in over. I'm sure you're tired of hearing it. You know, Jerry Sandusky uh, was supposed to uh, be arraigned in court for pretrial um, pretrial hearing, where he was supposed to uh, uh, his victims were supposed to get testimony. You know, they were yeah. going to get questioned, right? And then he pulls a preliminary dick, trial. I, it, a smart move in his yeah. idea, but kind of a dick mood for the victims. He says, "Well, I'm going to waive that pretrial stuff." You know, right? So right. the victims were all set up to pour their hearts out. And now they go back, but anyway. Back to the whole situation as far as like the system and you know everybody dogged out Joe Paterno said you didn't do enough you didn't do anything they stripped him of his uh, coaching they stripped him of everything now I heard a similar situation uh, that happened in a school where the kid came up a kid came up and, and said you know was doing some sexual things to other students and when they contacted his foster mom, his foster mom said, oh, that's just how we play at home. Oh. oh. So. Yeah, he's got a pretty mouth. That's how we play at home. <laughs> was that Florida Shit. or was that Germany? Was that. Florida, Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> so as a teacher, and you've been through the system, Chief. I mean, you know what's Sir? going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, how, what steps do you take? I mean, what do you do? Are you supposed to go straight to the police? Are you supposed to go to your supervisor, your principal? Yeah, you know, there is that, that yeah. pecking order, that hierarchy that you're supposed to follow, and you're supposed to trust and have faith in the system that's presented before you. Um, I had a scenario where I had, not in that realm, but I had a cutter, if everybody's familiar with what a cutter is, and I, this is when I was teaching in the middle school level, so this is when it really begins. This is that like a... Uh... Like a a self-mutilator, somebody... Goth gothic or emo kid that cuts himself or something? Yeah, well, and it was her, to be honest with you. And okay. she, uh, you know, just was finding herself, I suppose, and crying out for attention and what have you. And so it comes to my attention, she's cutting. And she liked me very well, because um, I was cool. And I, I, I had to sort of betray the trust to get her help. And so you go on this... <sighs> hierarchy of who you're supposed to speak to first the guidance counselor the social worker bring mom in for a meeting the kid goes all freaky out but it's just um it's an imperfect system unfortunately it's, compli it's complicated let me it ask is you this let me, yeah. let me ask you let me give you the scenario that was put at hand okay the situation was reported to the principal to the superintendent mm -hmm. to the social worker mm -hmm. and they said we're going to sort this out we will get back to you. It's going to take time, though. We're going to mm -hmm. get back to you in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks, a month. They really didn't specify. We'll get back to you. It's going to take get back time. To you. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. So what do you do in that situation when the establishment says that to you? Like, what? how do you handle that? Well, you, you get you, frustrated. You swear, uh, you know, 
behind closed doors and you try your best to do your job in the limitations that the law gives you. And in my, like I said, I can really only talk about what I personally went through and what that was, was the child continued to cut herself. And it was always um, superficial enough, I guess, that it was never taken extraordinarily seriously. And but I'm the- saying in a situation of sexual abuse, right? what, what now, do you do in that situation? Do you trust your, the, the establishment to take care of it? Or do you just, do you yourself go to the, say, screw this, screw the establishment, I'm going straight to the police? You know, you're sort of handcuffed. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure if you can really get that far with the police because everything goes back to your supervisors and your um, administration in those scenarios. And you have to have a paper trail. You have to have those files. So it's very difficult. You, A teacher is really handcuffed. Hey, listen, I'm retired. And I'm not old enough to be retired, but I'm retired because it was that frustrating for me to have the law shackle me the way it did. And so I saw things that I did not approve of. I was not able to get involved and I knew I could be helpful. And I walked away because at some point you get tired of hitting your head against the wall and nothing changes. So it's it's an imperfect system, guys. I, I wish I had better news for you. And I'm a positive person, but it, it's difficult I, I really have a hard time blaming everybody that the media is blaming on this whole thing going down at Penn State or Syracuse or wherever you know you want to point the the spotlight um, if there was telling to be told and then it you sort of think okay I've done what I can I, I think it's great when people are like, oh, well, if it were me, I would. But you know what? Until it's you, you don't have any fucking clue what you're going to do. You don't know what's going on I, in the system. You, have you don't no know. no idea. Exactly. And it is the most stressful thing in your life. That's your, ju- me. That's your job. You're it's your livelihood. It's your, your livelihood. Job. You know, a job is fucking um, McDonald's for four-hour shift. That's a job. You're talking about a career here. And a career is something that you're trying to do your entire working life. And if this is something that's going to taint you in some way, when you think you've done everything you can, you, you, you say, okay, I've done the best I can today, and you walk away. Police officers do it. Social workers do it. Teachers do it. It's the best you can do, and you have to have faith in the system. And sometimes people slip through, and that fucking sucks. So but you got to have faith. Definitely. And so to me, and I don't know the whole situation. Only God knows right. the situation. Right. But – what Joe Pa went through is he may have not known. He may have trust his hands in the system. There's no report that he seriously saw this type of this type of behavior, right. saw right. this type of thing. You I know, mean, I think if that man ha- saw Sandusky raping these boys, I think he would have done a hell of a lot more. But I think this was all done without his real knowledge and so he was told something so he told someone else and you think it's done like i've done my part i mean what's joe pa doing he's uh, running a fucking football team right a dynasty that he created that's what his business was not trying to solve these other problems because he had an avenue to go with that problem and he had faith that it would be taken care of Everybody's throwing him under the bus. I think it's a fucking crying shame. It's it's a travesty, in my opinion. And it's going to be an unpopular uh, opinion with many. But I'm sorry. I just don't see why we have to vilify Joe Pa and not the system. Just because he was the front man, the face of Penn State. He's yeah, everything but- that Penn State embodies. And if I was Joe Pa... I know he's old. He probably doesn't want to deal with that stuff. Yeah. Dialing cancer now, all this sort of crazy yeah. stuff. But if I was Joe Pa, I would straight go after the university. The university that mishandled the thing and ruined his career in life. And, you know, I'm yeah, not, I, like not, I hate litigations and lawsuit, but I would sue Penn State for right. screwing with my character, my name, my family name, and everything else. And I think if he did that, whether he got money or not, at least that would show that he had no part in this, you know, no guilt. Right, and I think that because of his age and his health and because that's a fight that is a Herculean task to win, you know, I just don't know if you can even go up against Penn State, uh, even if you are Joe Pa. So maybe he's trying to do what's best in his, in his waning years, but it, it to me it's just an absolute tragic situation that his legacy 
his duty, his loyalty to the school, to the, the boys that he coached, and it's all tarnished and tainted now. And I feel horribly for the victims. I have no doubt that they have been through, you know, hell on earth. No doubt. And I'm not trying to take anything away from them. But I don't see Joe Pa as the reason that happened. I don't. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, you know, I say all this Joe Pa, uh, I, 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 right now, so right now, the stuff that I've heard, I got to have faith that you went into the system and took part of the system. And I hope something happens to where you can really truly clear your name i know you feel guilt it, it you got to feel guilty because it's going on under your nose and you're sure. and it did sure. it, it didn't catch it but if this was a situation you know what i'm saying i would put penn state or the people you put uh in charge of handling or trusting of handling that situation uh responsible for it you know i just and, have to put a little, yeah. little more perspective i'm sorry to interrupt you master yeah. Wills, but to me it's like this somebody tells you something heinous like that okay it's something you just go holy fuck I, I, are you kidding me so you first you have to digest it then you go okay my training tells me i'm supposed to do this but you also probably like most of us would do take it with a grain of salt or is there exaggeration here do i know the facts have i seen this happen do my senses tell me that this is correct i mean there's a whole um realm of criteria that we're not privy to that joe pa may or may not have went through but how would we have reacted? That's where I go. Everybody's so good to criticize, and man, they know everything about this, but they weren't in Joe Pa's shoes. And so I just find it horrendous that society has already, uh, you know, said you're, you're He's a guilty. Whipping boy. Yeah. He's a whipping yeah. boy. And, and I, he's a scapegoat. No. Uh, I, and what I know, I, got, I want to take a quick break. I want to get back. I want to talk more about the uh, political race and stuff like this coming up after the break. But uh, real quick, closing point, uh, Sandusky, your scum, uh, which mm -hmm. Rico has uh, so adamantly put out there, uh, and Joe Pa, I hope you stand up to this if you are not a part of it. But if you did know, you know, screw you, you know, screw you and the whole <laughs> university and everything else. Right now, I got faith in you, but if I found, you know, right now. Uh, you know, you're not guilty till proven innocent, or till proven not innocent. But if till proven Joe, uh, you make a fool of me, why then, I will do everything I can. Then I will talk trash about you till the end of 2012. <laughs> hey, what I want to do is take another quick break, man. We got into a heated debate, but there's more to come, more conversation. That's what we like to do. You're listening to the main event on eventlevel.com. We'll be right back after this indie music break. You're tuned into the main event. Keep that browser locked. That's how you feel, boo. Damn, that's how I feel, too. Now put one in the air and sit down in a chair. We about to break it down on the beat. Yeah, she close her eyes tight and take a look. I keep her mind like her favorite book. It's open wide when I'm high. She my favorite cook. She make my favorite meal. I steal her heart. It ain't the money I make, it's how I make her feel Cause I don't make no money, she said let's make a deal I give you whatever you need till you make it big Cause she think I will, then she pass the kill hey, I think I need to chill Damn, that's how you feel We'll put one in the air and sit down in a chair We about to break it down on the real yeah. Bet this how deep meditation feel We barely speak, having deep conversations still Like how you get like Is I could take it to the land where the magic is You could be Jasmine and lay on my carpet And we can ride like Aladdin did I could show you the world, let me define traveling And you could come along if you're not scared I can take you there, I can take you there Let me take you there, I can take you there I'ma take you there, let me take you there We had a little cipher Wearing off, but she still feels like a I think I need to chill Damn, that's how you feel we we'll put one in the air And sit down in a chair We about to break it down on the real Share a doobie with me Watch a movie with me Feeling on your booty Now you wanna do the duty with me Give me one second The movie's almost over They about to run credits She saying come and get it I take her down 
hold it down like a caretaker Wear it out, now she in the clouds like she air vapor If she condensates, get some windshield wipers I call her hummingbird, but she still feels like a Damn, that's how you feel That's how I feel too We'll put one in the air and sit down in a chair We about to break it down on the rear We go hard, whole apartment is full Disappear, but I was just really gone. The purple disappeared. She was just hella brown. This shit is hella strong. Now we laugh for hella long. We stoned. Now she wanna go star searching. Girl, you didn't know my name is Lavar Burton. I could show you rainbows, no skittles, or starbursts. And ask me what I wanna do with my life. I'm not certain, cuz. And you could come along if you're not scared. What up, everybody? Far You're off. back on the main event here on eventlevel.com. <laughs> Again, more music that makes me feel really high. <laughs> I think that could be because you really high. <laughs> well, it could be that. We just heard Reading Rainbow by my man, A1. Reading Rainbow? I remember that. What that did was you just say about doing what to your hair? A1 Straight? out of San Francisco. Some more West Coast flavor for you, man. We're getting a lot of West Coast love. Uh, from That's it. Parker. To A1 to my man Pigeon John. Manifest Destiny. We're going from Atlantic to Pacific. Yes, I know you love that. I know you love that show, Reading Rainbow. Jordy Forge. LeVar Burton. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's he was Kutakinte, you know, before he was in Star Trek. Yeah. That was an he awful was a- reference. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> First of all, his name was Toby, <laughs> not Kunta Kinte. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love LeVar Burton. I you know, we love it. it. And that I is love like a, that is a really touchy subject, you know what I'm saying? Well, why? The conversation between African American and, you know, Caucasians. It's like. Well, wait a minute. I never enslaved anybody. I'm so sorry. Nor did any yeah, of my ancestors. No, 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 no. I'm not getting into that whole debate. I'm just saying <laughs> it's just a rough subject. Please don't get all defensive and start saying stuff that's. Yeah, don't crazy. make your white guilt fucking flip yeah, me up. Yeah, don't get your white guilt all flipped <laughs> out. I'm just saying it's a touchy subject. Remember, Korean. All right, it's no, probably I'm talking Korean. Malaysian. It's different than a black thing. guy. I've always wondered, hey, Will, is he a Korean half North Korean or South Korean? <laughs> are you both from Florida or what? I mean, are you from Georgia? Fifty-two, yes. fifty. Which is that latitude longitude? What is? Oh yeah. God. What? I expect more out of you. You're talking like Southerners. You guys are Northerners. Don't get it, okay? What are you talking what about? I, just, I didn't say anything racist at all. I'm I just watched a uh, documentary crazy. on uh, the ancient Blasians and uh, their monuments. <laughs> very, very interesting documentary. Here's something. Because of your statements, I'm going to put you in this category. Here is a uh, headline I have. Ohio landlord fights the white-only pool sign ruling. Uh, you got to be discriminated against white a black girl stuff. posting a discriminated against a black girl posting only a white girl swimming pool. Uh, one state to uh, reconsider its decision. As uh, September 9th, Jamie Hayne, who's white, violated the Civil Rights Act by posting a sign in pool as a duplex where the teenage girl was visiting her parents. Uh, wow, that's insane. This is in Ohio. Viably insane. That someone would put a white only sign at a pool. What is wrong? What's up with their head? I mean, uh, do you not know it's the uh, 20th century? What are you doing here? Uh, I think it's the 21st 20th century, century for yeah. about the and, last 11 uh, years. 21st century, you know what I mean. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, you know, you ask the key question what is wrong? Well, with the percentage of people that are on prescription drugs they probably don't need, God knows what's wrong with them. Uh, and if it was medically induced or not, if it's a natural thing or not, who knows? This this could be a. Uh, Would a Michael look- Jackson have been allowed to go in that pool at the end of his career? <laughs> That's a good question. I would fair, wonder. Fair question. Oh man. A uh, woman got a kidney. It is the season to begin? A woman got a kidney off Eve. Yeah. Wow. It's right, right, Craigslist. Craigslist. It was Craigslist. I Craigslist, thought. baby. Yeah, she put an ad out. She got a kidney from a stranger. 
you know what's cra- kind of crazy is that I, f- I feel different uh, vibe out when I go out. I mean, I think people are giving a lot more. I think the uh, that's just my opinion. I don't know. Uh, you hear a lot you of people going out and money for giving a kidney up though. What I would do? What? It's not not you specifically. Do people get money for offering their kidney up? I don't know. Uh, you can sell your kidney on eBay, but it's uh, illegal in um, in the United States. So if you're caught, I'm sure it's legal wherever. You maybe you can fly off to a foreign country, but it's illegal. I think by like Geneva Convention to, to sell body parts. To sell your body oh, parts is illegal. So you can't sell your penis, Hanlon. I'm sorry. Uh. Twenty nine ninety five. You can buy Hanlon's <laughs> penis. They well, I was just going to do a mold of it. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't his actual penis. But I'm going out to the, uh, you know, so I'm going out to stores and Salvation Army. I see people giving them. I mean, last year it was like fuck the world, and I didn't see anybody put no money. Now I see more people giving. That's just my observation. I put in three separate times to the bell ringer. As wow, the, oh, dude, I do, and I give you know cash money. I don't do fucking change. Cash money and uh, and I don't have it, but I give it because I yeah. feel. Do you see the trend of people? Go- this is a weird thing. People going out and paying off people's layaway. Nice. See that? Yeah, people are going to their get no. their layaway <laughs> items, and people and they're like, "You owe one penny." Just like <gasps> some crazy secret Santa. Damn. Yeah. No, that hasn't happened in my world. I'm gonna go put some shit on layaway and see what happens. What are you gonna put on layaway? What does Master Wills want for Christmas? That's the burning question of this show. Um, hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> he has no clue. I have no Men clue. Don't. Men are like, I don't know. I, I really do. Want what, do you, what do you got? What do you want for Christmas? Me? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Why? That's so lame. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I want stuff. <laughs> All right. I just want to, I want to get into it. Uh, the political debate that's going on right now uh, and the, um, well, let me mute Hanlon, and we'll get going. <laughs> the environment of the political race, I mean, it is, you. I, the candidate race is really starting to take form as far as I think uh, a lot of the these Republican candidates are starting to get filtered out. Um, and you're seeing every, you know, all these people falling off. I mean, the strong front runners right now, you know, I would say would be uh, Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich, maybe in a third Ron Paul. Um, but, uh, you know, we're starting to see uh, uh, something going on in the race. It's weird because so early the Republican Party is uh, trying to find their front runner, but now they're starting to, to have disintention within the own party and attack their own people. Um, what do you think about this Republican race right now, and who do you feel is the stronger of the points? I mean, the debate right now seems Mitt Romney versus uh, Newt Gingrich. Uh, what do you what do you kind of see with this, uh, Hanlon? Oh uh, well, as you know, maybe uh, if anyone reads my blogs, and I know sometimes people do, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe uh, Mitt Romney is eventually going to be the candidate. Uh, from the Republican side. Uh, that being said, uh, we're going into Iowa caucus in just a matter of weeks now. New Gingrich is leading the polls, sort of a surprise front runner for a lot of people. Um, Iowa is becoming more and more, whereas it used to be a traditional barometer or indicator of the way the rest of the caucuses might go. It's not so much anymore following Iowa be New Hampshire, and it's uh, pretty much an attitude in New Hampshire that says, I'm not going to let the Iowans tell me what to think. So sometimes just out of spite, they'll vote opposite right. Iowa. So mm-hmm. you, you kind, kind of don't know. You get some indicators. Michelle Bachman um, was the winner of the straw poll, the one poll that did happen in Iowa to date. Ron Paul is doing very strong. He always, or this, since, you know, I think this is his third time running, he's done uh, well in Iowa most of the time. He gets a grassroots organization going in pretty much every corner of Iowa. Um, in an effort to make a national statement, uh, hoping that some people still believe that Iowa has as much relevance as it used to, and it doesn't. So, um, <laughs> we're, it doesn't. So, we're really going to come down to uh, South Carolina after New Hampshire, and uh, that's when things are going to get down to the nitty gritty. 
and uh, the things that are said tomorrow night on a uh, debate that will take place at the Fox News Channel. It's one of the last debates, and if not the last debate before the Iowa caucus. And um, so I expect Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich to go at it pretty well. I expect Rick Perry and Michelle Bachman and Rick Santorum and Ron Paul to stick their heads into the game and try to remind people we're still here, we're still here. It still could be anybody's game. Is Rick Perry uh, related to Katy Perry by any chance? I'm just... I do not know. Okay. Do you think Bachman and Perry are kind of a, you know, they're done? They're they're too far behind. There's nothing yeah, for them. I mean, do people, are people really going to take these two seriously? I feel like people. I mean, I well, know. in Rick Perry's case, maybe um, he may be done, and uh, in Michelle Bachman's case, probably. But I don't, I'm not quite as certain um, about Rick Perry being done because uh, she's had a more consistent following. She has a real good grassroots, long time um, devoted group of followers. And uh, of people that support her, and she has uh, gradually widened her support base. And so, I just th- see her political foundation as a little more sturdy. And so, they're just going to be both of them will be careful about things that they say while we're trying to remind people we're still in this race and it could be anyone's game. Uh, they'll also be very careful about how much criticism they point at either Newt or Mitt. Probably both of them hoping for some sort of administrative position <laughs> in the event that either one of them win the nomination and then eventually beat Obama head on. Now, do you think uh, what uh, transcended with Herman Cain, uh, his allegations of sexual abuse, his reports of settling with these, um, um, what do you call it? I'm not going to say sexual accusers, offender, but accusers of um, sexual harassment. Yes, it is. Uh, do you think? What do you think about Herman's Cain falling out? How's campaign handle it? And do you think this is kind of a black mark on the Republican uh, campaign? Uh, I think Herman his it, when the shit first started hitting the fan, Herman's campaign did not really handle it very well at all. He said things he shouldn't have said. He opened his mouth when he shouldn't have opened it, and uh, committed himself into a corner that he later ended up regretting. Uh, so that, if anything, shows a couple of things that some people would look at that and say, well, it, he's just as real as the next guy. And there's a lot of things to like about Herman Cain. I really do like a lot about his business sense, about his sense of um, the, the republic that the founding fathers had in mind and how to preserve it. His um, instincts about capitalism and the free enterprise system and how to actually run a successful business. He is definitely a guru and a turnaround artist at that. Um, but, you know, personal things do matter. And eventually, like I say, certain things that he said and the ways that his campaign did handle the, the first couple of accusations really backfired and painted himself into a corner that he had to suspend his campaign. Notice, suspend it. He said he's going to suspend his campaign. That's so he can still accept donations <laughs> <laughs> without really running for office. I mean, he just really looked so bad. I, I thought he handled it incredibly wrong. I mean, the dude was sitting there trying to backpedal and and defend himself he spent his last half of his campaign going these people are liars he's saying yeah. accusations when he yeah. could have been saying could have sidestepped the whole thing not really said said, said this uh a lot of these things are false but i'm going to continue to you know focus on the policies right and here he is totally saying you know, i didn't touch that woman's ass and no i didn't right. take a ride with that girl on the car well, well, one probably like I said, did. There, I'm gonna say. there's a couple schools of thought about it. When one person might look at it and say, oh, he's just like a normal person. It doesn't really have much to do with him being president. Like they kind of forgave Bill Clinton for screwing around while he was president. Um, That's but what there's, the other, liberal, there's the other school of thought that says, <laughs> no, there's the other school of thought. And this is more my school of thought that looks at this whole thing as it's unfolded with Herman Cain and says, OK, Herman, you're a smart guy. You're worth a lot of money. You've been around. You know business, you know negotiations, you know the way the media works, you know the world we live in. How in the world could you decide to run for office and not come out, get all your skeletons out of the closet early? I've always thought that. People have said to me, Hanlon, run for freaking office, become mayor, go to Congress, do something. (laughs) And I'll never do that, of course. But anytime I've ever thought of it, I would think the first thing I would want to do is get all my skeletons out of the closet. Because if you don't, the media is going to eventually find them. And then you just look dishonest. You've lost trust right from the start for not having come forward with what eventually we all found out to be at least somewhat true. Usually where there's smoke, there's fire. So (laughs) So now we're talking about uh, Herman Cain and his infidelities. Yet the front alleged, right, front, alleged infidelity. Because he claims he hasn't been 
Okay, no. okay, okay. Alleged, fidel- alleged infidelities, but here we have a front runner ha- who has non-alleged confirmed <laughs> infidelities <laughs> and uh, Uncreate several infidelity. wives. You know, it's, it's a crazy uh, uh, oxymoron. I don't know what you want to call it. It's like a little a double parody. standard. Like what the hell? It's a parody. Going? It's a little bit of a double standard. Sure. Uh, Newt being sort of a walking contradiction in the sense that he's trying to be a conservative yet he's in his third marriage and uh, you know that's not very conservative <laughs> at least if you're trying to gain the Christian conservative corner of the uh, conservatives which conservatives certainly embody a lot more than just the Christian base but it is, that Christian base is an important part of the conservative base that uh, any conservative candidate is going to want to appeal to and unfortunately for Newt, his infidelities have been made very public, uh, including um, basically handing one of his now ex-wives divorce papers while she was on a, a virtual deathbed uh, with cancer. And he's divorcing her for another woman. <laughs> and she's just revealing this long Love ongoing Love won't air. wait. And uh, so, yeah. So uh, in a lot of ways, he kind of reminds me of a modern day Ben Franklin. Because Ben had a lot of his infidelities. He was one of the greatest Americans that ever lived. Extremely intelligent, which Newt is. Uh, and Ben Franklin so... was. But Ben Franklin also had a lot of infidelities. He's, he was, you know, there was a lot of reasons Ben Franklin was never a president. <laughs> and there's a lot of reasons why, while Newt Gingrich is extremely qualified to do a lot of things and highly intelligent, there's a lot of reasons why he's not going to be president either. And his infidelities is one of them. Divorce papers on your uh, deathbed. wife's deathbed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what? We sorry. Maybe, she, maybe, she, maybe, she became, maybe she became a bitch while she was on the internet. I don't know. She's intolerable. Lotion, I'm dry. Uh. Why are you so damn needy? <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> bitch. Right there. Will you stop your whining already? Suck it up. Other people have cancer. Why can't you be kind? You know, it just you know, like much like the uh, Jerry Sandusky or the uh, Jopa defending you guys coming to defense of Jopa. You know, we weren't really there either. I mean, who knows? Maybe there was miles and miles of resentment built up to, to the point where Newt said, "Fuck this! This bitch deserves it." You know, <laughs> who knows whatever the case was, but but on the outside, it doesn't look good. That, that, that aspect of, of of Newt's persona. Now, here's my last and final question. And, uh, it's about time we got to take another break here. So my last and final question about the whole thing is that with Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich looking to be the top front runners, and there has now become a, a feud within the party. And you see, what I see is a lot of Mitt Romney attacking and a lot of Newt Gingrich stepping back and saying, you know, I, I think... Mitt is a great guy. I think it would be a great runner. I'm focusing on the policies, which is, I'd kind of say, maybe the high road. I don't know. But do no, you that's not the... No, okay, Newt, okay. Newt is saying a lot more than that. Okay. Well, do you think that this bickering between the party uh, creates... It helps the Democrats, helps the Obama campaign, uh, and... Do you do you think this is the right time for it? And do you think it's damage? Do you think it's damaging? I think it's very parents? healthy. I think it's very very healthy. Uh, it's healthy politics for any party to continue to identify itself and strengthen each argument that it has, each position that it has. And this is a good way to go about it: is to call each other out on every level possible that matters to whatever aspects of our platform we're running on. And there are many. Uh, so uh, I do think it's a very, very healthy thing. I often wish the Democrats would do more of it instead of having forty thousand dollar a plate dinners and blowing smoke each other up each other's ass with the press all night. Uh, they don't get real with each other, and that's what the Republican side does do. And uh, I think it's a very, very healthy thing, and it refines their argument to the end, so that they're certain, they're absolutely certain about their candidate, whoever it is, um, at the end of the line. So you don't think it's damaging at all? It can be damaging maybe on some surface levels, but the damage that it does is not long-lasting. I think most experienced um, politicians and or businessmen know that, and uh, they don't take a lot of things personally. And like I said, Newt has not been Mr. Nice Guy about Mitt Romney. There's one thing that Newt Gingrich said just a couple days ago uh, that I already said on another radio show, that uh, on one of the Man Cave shows, that... uh, He's going to pay for. He's going to regret having said what he said about um, Mitt Romney having created bankruptcies. Um, the issue is about regarding Newt Gingrich having received money from Freddie Mac, 
um, which was one of the two uh, government agencies in housing, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, uh, that went belly up. And the taxpayer basically had to bail out twice uh, under the um, wonderful stewardship of one Barney Frank, <laughs> who is no longer running for re-election. What a coincidence. Uh, mm. Barney Frank is a beautiful example of how you go to Congress, make $96 million. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, and leave. <laughs> but anyway, real, and Barney Frank yeah. was in charge of uh, Fannie Mae and the Freddie Mac debacle went under. Um, you know, they forced the banks to give loans to people that um, never could have paid those loans, didn't qualify for those loans. A lot of mortgages went upside down. Taxpayer ends up paying for it. Newt Gingrich was hired by Freddie Mac as a financial consultant and paid $1.6 million to be a financial consultant for Freddie Mac. Now, Mitt Romney was in a diner in New Hampshire about a week ago or maybe five days ago, and he was asked by, I think, Brian Kilmeade of Fox News, do you think Newt Gingrich should pay the $1.6 million he was paid as a financial consultant to Freddie Mac? Do you think he should pay that back since Freddie Mac went upside down and the taxpayers paid for that? Um, shouldn't Newt pay that back, especially since Newt Gingrich himself back in the uh, a handful of years ago said that everyone involved uh, with the debacle that happened at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac should either go to jail or pay a fine. Well, he didn't tell us at the time. That also included himself, but apparently it didn't because he was making $1.6 million himself as a financial consultant at the same time. So Mitt Romney said, yes, I, I, I do think uh, that he should pay it back. So within like, I mean, 20 minutes of press time, boom, the press is firing right back over to the Newt Gingrich campaign. Hey, Mitt says you should pay the 1.6 million that you made as a consultant at Freddie Mac back. And Newt said, I think something that he will pay dearly for in the long run. And what it was, was he said, if Mr. Romney, Governor Romney is ready to pay back the money he's made, making companies go bankrupt as he's been a financial consultant at Bain Consulting, then I will pay back the $1.6 million. And I think that was a horrible thing for him to say, and here's why. Mitt Romney was a turnaround artist at a consulting firm called Bain Consulting, where what their job to do as a consultant was to go in and streamline your business and make you more profitable. Yes, sometimes when that happens, there are layoffs. And yes, there were layoffs as a result of different recommendations that Bain Consulting, uh, with Mitt Romney's help, made to certain companies, which did in turn streamline themselves and make themselves more productive. And in many other cases, Bain Consulting got behind some small ideas where guys came to them with 20 employees and Bain Consulting liked the idea so much the business flourished into 80,000 employees like a company like Staples, office supply company. That's another company that uh, Mitt Romney helped grow from nothing to something. So while Bain Consulting did recommend layoffs in certain places. They also have, in the long run, created through their recommendations many, many more jobs than were ever lost. And the whole idea is that he's making an argument about Mitt Romney partaking what is a, the essence of a free market economy and capitalism itself, which is taking the risk. Without Mitt Romney's help, they don't take the risk. There is no staples. There's not 80,000 jobs, okay? That is the essence of capitalism and the free market economy. So for, Nip, Mitt, uh, for Newt Gingrich to sit there and make a comparison about him being paid $1.6 million in taxpayer dollars to be a financial consultant for a debacle that happened at Freddie Mac and compare that to yes. pure profit that Mitt Romney made taking risk in the free market is absolutely ridiculous. And anyone with a brain is going to see that in the long run and go, Newt, you just can't do it. You still shoot from the hip. When you get defensive, you shoot from the hip and you say stupid things like that. And that's one of the stupid things he said. And I think just on that alone, Mitt Romney is so clearly the superior leader in this whole race that um, I strongly well, support him. Well, Hanlon, 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 let me say this. Uh, and you're a strong supporter, a Tea Party supporter, uh, and it, you know my views are a lot more liberal. If you have any views that differ, or you want to come in and give Handlin your comments or uh, the main event your comments. The number to call in is five zero two three six five fifty six hundred. You can hit up and tell us what you think about these subjects. But uh, Handlin, um, you know from what I see, and obviously you support Mitt Romney over New Gingrich. I saw an ad where the guy was like, hey, I, you know, Newt Gingrich is running for president, but at least he's not Obama. Yeah. You know, that was the thing. So what happens when you are giving this message out to your conservatives? Newt Gingrich, at least he's not Obama. And mm -hmm. Newt Gingrich wins. Does that mean the conservatives are like, well, I don't want to vote for this guy because, you know, 
You know, I think at least he's not Obama, so I'm going to vote for Obama. It's like that is that not damaging to the Republican Party's race? Does that make it look no. like there is this, this tension? There's not a unification under the Republican. There's people are unsure because there's people are fighting in between it. So the Republican people look like the Republican uh, candidates look like they don't know what the embodiment of the Republican Party is. You don't think that? No, I, I disagree. I think I think supporters, and, and you may remember, there have been a handful of people that have been in and out of this race that are no longer here. Um, but no matter who people supported, whether it's a, a, a backrunner like Rick Santorum or a Michelle Bachman or a frontrunner like a Gingrich or a uh, Romney or anybody in between, the Ron Paul supporters, the, uh, the Rick Perry supporters, the Herman Cain, former Herman Cain supporters, uh, John Huntsman supporters, lots of different, wherever it is from the right, no matter who the Republican candidate is, 99 plus, 99 percent plus <laughs> of those Republican supporters are going to vote for the Republican candidate because it must be anybody but Obama for the for many reasons, but the main one being the overturn of Obamacare, which will eventually destroy us. Our debt is so accelerated. <clears throat> if you went to usgovernmentdebtclock.gov, usdebtclock.gov, go to that website, and then you'll just watch the debt clock go crazy. You're just watching us go in debt by the second. It's so but out of think, hand. But, like my Christmas. but okay, it's a, it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a management this. nightmare, and someone's got to get a, a freaking plug in the spigot, or we're going to lose it. Okay, so w w you're talking about this debt and Obamacare. Uh, there is a argument out there that these people, that these freshmen in college, these Tea Party freshmen, came in, uh, signed a binding, um, I wouldn't say contract, but a binding statement that they would not raise taxes. Uh, uh, this was uh, by a big lobbyist, and they would not raise taxes on big corporations. And um, the the these parties has this party this tea party these freshmen these freshmen that came in are supporting a raise of taxes on the middle class americans yet they're not what tax is that more taxes on the wealthy who what tax first of all are you talking about on middle class americans that they're they supporting a raise of tax on the middle class income and no new taxes on uh these people that are these corporations that are making tons and tons of money no corporation tax no raising corporation tax no taxing the uh five percent rich but let's raise taxes on the middle class which they seems like the tea party it's ridiculous the name tea party would not want to raise taxes on the middle class you know that's the last thing the tea party wants to do now, i don't know where you're getting that information but here's what really the case is uh obama wants to cut the bush tax cuts he wants to cut a portion of them and um, t attached to a bill for the Kentucky pipeline, <laughs> for a, a pipeline that uh, is going to gain us anywhere from 20,000 to 200,000 new jobs, um, attached to that bill to approve that work is uh, a part of the bill is, led, is an amendment that says you can't um, cut the Bush tax cuts, you, even on the richest. And that's the thing that's holding up this bill right now that will approve a, a pipeline that will make us less dependent on foreign oil, that will give 20,000 to 200,000 new jobs and, you know, secondary jobs that come into place after the thing's in order, um, all because he it doesn't uphold his party line. And he is trying to turn that around and sell it as if Republicans want to raise your taxes. When in fact, what he's wanting to do is he's the one who's wanting to raise your taxes. We want to continue the Bush tax cuts for everyone. For everyone. I, I, I say again, I, I'm going to draw a reference to something I heard Adam Carolla. You may be familiar with Adam Carolla. He's a comedian who used to do the man show with Jimmy Kimmel. Adam Carolla made a reference the other day about how... Mr. When, Unibrow. Yeah, when we were growing up in the 70s, you'd walk down the street with your dad, you'd see Mr. Jenkins drive by in the Rolls Royce, and you'd say, there's Mr. Jenkins. Look up to that guy. He worked hard. He built a company. He built an empire. And now he's got a Rolls Royce, and he's driving up the hill to the mansion. You can live like that. Look up to that guy. Nowadays, we got a bunch of Wall Street malcontent assholes protesting and throwing bricks at Mr. Jenkins. They look at Mr. Jenkins drive by in the Rolls Royce, and they go, Ew, look at Mr. Jenkins. How come he's got the Rolls Royce, and I just drive a piece of shit? How come I'm driving a bike? and I don't fucking got nothing because you're a malcontent. That's why. You don't look up to Mr. Jenkins anymore. Now you're envious of him. 
that is a complete turnaround of what capitalism and free enterprise is supposed to be all about. You're supposed to look up to Mr. Jenkins. I and I want to tax him into oblivion so he comes down and lives in the gutter with you. Who does that make rich? Nobody. How are we taxing I want a job from Mr. Jenkins. How are we taxing the oblivion? I mean, the tax cut raise is, you know, uh, thousands yes. of dollars on the million dollars. Ta Mr. Jenkins, I think it's a different climate back in the back from the 1950s you're talking about something totally you're talking about to, two totally different paradigms if we are in a economic crisis which we need to fix and then we can go and do whatever reforms we have to do why is it that somebody who's making and i'm not talking about the person that's making uh a million dollars or five million dollars like these people that are making billions of dollars if you're talking about raising these taxes these top five percenters why is that a bad thing to Okay, I'll explain the comedy. Comedy, uh, economy. economy. I will explain Sorry. that. Okay, I can explain that. That's a great question, uh, and there's a couple answers to it. One, right now, the richest one percent of this country pays over fifty percent of the tax base. That's not fair. The richest ten percent of this country pays over seventy percent of the tax base. That's not fair. You're going to them. And you're saying you're not paying enough? You're saying to the richest 10%, 70% of the tax base that the government collects every year isn't enough from you, doctor, from you, lawyer, from you, professional who worked your ass off to get where you are, company owner, corporate guy, evil corporate guy who I throw bricks at and call shitty names. I need more of your money. Why do I need more of your money? Well, because I run terrible things like the post office and waste money every day, running social programs that don't fucking work. And so why, I need more. Why do I say that? You people and rich. Why do I say that? Is because I feel these corporations are run by board of directors that are not. It's all controlled by board of directors. Uh, these people that buy stocks, buy stuff, and the main focus, which may have not been the time before, I, the main focus is how do we make more money? And how do we make more money? We make cutbacks. We cut people. And we make more money with less people, less workforce. Therefore, we're not going to create more jobs. And we're going to pay people less. I disagree. So people freedoms, that's I, disagree. I disagree. You sound like Obama when you say that. Who blames ATMs and the internet for losing people's jobs. You know what? When the car was invented, the guy who made horse carriages also lost his job. Buggy whip guy went out of business. You know, it's called capitalism. Buggy whip guy. <laughs> the guy who made buggy whips and he was the richest Mr. Jenkins on the top of the hill, he couldn't make buggy whips anymore. Is that because when no S&M was them. born? I'm just curious. Because the car was invented. It's There's called capitalism. The internet is a wonderful thing. And Obama, in a speech just last week, shit all over it and said it's to blame. It's to blame for you losing your job. That ATM, it made you lose your job. I mean, he blames technology. Are you kidding me? Now, that's answer one. Answer two I want to get to. Here's another reason why you don't tax the rich into oblivion. Let's just say for a second, okay, you're all right. 70% from the richest 10% isn't enough, which is absurd. But let's just entertain that thought for a moment and say, okay, let's make it 90%. In fact, why don't you pay 99%? And you can just live down here. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Dr. Zhivago, but Dr. Zhivago, now 20 people are going to live in your house because you have too much room in your house. You need to house 20 people for free in there. So we're going to take 99%. Let's just say you taxed that richest 10% into absolute poverty. Do you know what you would do to the financial debt problem that we have? Nothing. You would throw a drop of water into the Mississippi. It would do nothing. It would have no effect. That's how big the problem is, Wills. It's not that taxing the rich will do nothing. And let's say you tax them this year. What about next year? Where are you going to get the money to keep these ridiculous programs like Obamacare going? You already taxed the rich into oblivion. They have nothing left. There's 20 strangers living in their fucking house. Where are you going to get the money then? I'll tell you where you get the money. You repeal Obamacare and you get regulation. You get government out of the face of business and you let them run fucking business and you let another staples open and you let the Internet do its thing. All right, guys, you just heard a heated debate. We're going now that to was a heated debate. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. We're going to close up the show. We've gone overboard. Uh, and one thing I got to, you know, I know we got into it. One thing that I want to tell all you listeners out there that um, there is something with this administration that I, I do disagree with. And you brought up the Internet is that there is a uh, blacklist campaign and a campaign against 
our internet and our freedom to information and everything and, and and that's something we do have to fight for as americans uh you know freedom is the old ultimate equalizer uh freedom of information through we get through the internet is the ultimate equalizer to our society so please if you have anybody that's going to um try to do this incredible internet policing campaign you know let's fight against that you know what i'm saying we're out here for the indie people and everybody else uh but we're gonna really take a quick to that we're gonna take a quick <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break that's gonna be a topic for another time we'll be right back listen to the main event eventlevel.com i'm a gangster for real i feel so damn gangster i'm a gangster for real I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. That's right. I'm a gangster for real. You're just decking out my style. Check it. Mm -hmm. huh. It's just one of those days. I feel the sun rise around me. All the clouds run away. Huh. Something funny's going on. Okay, okay, now where's all the traffic? Hmm. Is someone trying to clown me? Why do I feel fantastic? I'm used to things always going wrong, but now I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. <laughs> Sitting in my backyard, looking at a little squirrel. Drinking some coffee, feel like a whole different world. Plus, I got the bomb rhyme skills. I got Hawthorne backing me up. Plus, my wife looks good. I got butter soft seats all up in my truck. Yep, yep, I'm banging some Depeche mode. Windows down so you can see my fresh mode. Yeah, my 6 foe is only a Nintendo. But I'm smashing foods on some Super Mario. Never picture myself sitting on some big dough. Used to singing the blues on 6 and Alvarado. I'm chilling in the back of the belt chewing tacos. I feel like young Sean Connery in Cabo. And now, and now. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Break down. Act like you in Cabo. Let me take you out. We'll go to Denny's on Vermont and we'll get waffles on the house. Yeah. Act like you in Cabo. Let me take you out. We'll go to Denny's on Vermont and we'll get waffles on the house. Check it. Cause watch the young Duke Kellington make the place gelatin. Shake the fake Pelican. I the black Gilligan to keep seeking. Keep reaching the seeds peaking. Keep breathing. Keep breathing the same reason I leak venom. Every time I choose to spit them in a line, hit them with an unusual rhythm that you never heard of. Some of the words ever spoken, but ever heard them. Those who oppose, I'm not joking. Cause now I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. I'm a gangster for real. I feel so damn gangster. I'm a gangster for real. Keep the motherfucker. 
fucking number to the prime You haters, you can't deny How I get my shit so high The way that I spit my I can be taught Spitting like if you were robot With the voice box Cause you can't sing And your flows ain't hot That shit went out With the 80s pop Well I guess it's okay To help your album drop I ain't saying I'm a vocalist But when I talk on this good green It makes my mind go chit -ching. So quit lying And thinking it better than that Cause 80% of the planet You're thinking the same crap So you're making it up About what you're not Okay, okay, okay Claiming that you got the respect But you do not know Choke, you think that you're crazy, crazy. But you ain't done nothing lately My mind ain't giving in Somebody believe they got all the credentials I think I ain't feeling your shit now, your shit now. So you better get down, get down The sign I ain't know this Papa, Papa, know this My profile, la 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 like this Straight up and down and I'll be honest I shake up the ground like play tectonics I rip right through the magnitude Thought you knew anybody won't try Spitting, <laughs> highest degree, and putting out shit from scratch. The visionary, feeding the world wide as the Milky Way dairy. My mind won, you sons be complimentary. complimentary. The style's hitting, I'm kidding, those out to get me. I don't fear man, the clammy stone ninja. Who else keeping it real? You don't figure? A lot of motherfuckers try, keep trying, but they ain't high. But a lot of these souls couldn't get high. So you're making it up about what you're not. Okay, okay, okay. Claiming that you got the respect, but you do not know. What up, everybody? Get back on the main event. I think it's East Coast, West Coast, North and South. I give it all love, and tonight we're giving tons of West Coast love. You just heard Stone Ninjas from Arizona, No Way. And again, our guest of the night, Pigeon John from California. So gangster. My boyfriend. Yes. Chief 187's <laughs> new boyfriend who likes Jersey girls. That's Yes, he loves us. And me. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> hey, we had, a, we had a great debate, man. And uh, oh, uh, man. definitely, any of you guys uh, want to uh, you like the show, uh, come show us support. We have the website, facebook.com slash event level. Come and like us. You'll find out new interviews we have going on, everything else. You can join us on our Twitter at event level and you can hit me up on my twitter at master wills if you want to see what i do like you know i sometimes tweet you know taking a shit on the toilet uh, <laughs> rolling up a i have favorited that one <laughs> <laughs> uh but i also give you updates on the show but uh you know come be a part of our event level.com family uh and this is the time of the show oh, that better twoot a twoot. I'm hey, a I got twoot. my man DB on the line. D Blocka. My man, what's up? He's live from the tunnels. He's he's live from the tunnels of uh, Lex Town, Lexington. Where we have, you know, I did gave a lot of wet West Coast love, but a lot of time I gave a lot of uh, Kentucky, Lexington, Louisville love, man. Uh, you, we got some hot artists in Kentucky. You know, some people sleep on us. You know. I think we're on that <laughs> but it's not true we got gangsters in our locker rooms we got <laughs> gangsters in our streets and we are not scared to represent uh and if you don't believe me you can come to eventlevel.com check out our videos check out our music 
uh, check out everything that we have that represents Kentucky. It's going to stack up against whatever you got, maybe even better. I don't even know. Depends on what you're bringing. And uh, that's what's up. You heard? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, real quick, man, I got to close the show. We've gone way over. Let's go and get into the shout out portion of our show. Uh, and I'm going to start with you, Hanlon. Speaking of tea party bands, the silent do gooders <laughs> have music on iTunes. Incredible segue. 99 cents is all it costs to get one great tea party tune what at a, a time. What a great stocking stuffer. I'm telling you. And you can get USA made t shirts at fuboware.com. F U B O W E A R.com. Gives you the best in conservative everything, including silent do-gooders wear made in the USA. And, of course, a shout-out to you guys. Love you. Thanks for the great time and the the wonderful um, conversation, Will. That was uh, very fulfilling. I, I, I feel like I just like ran a mile or something. It was, it was great. I feel healthier. Completely fulfilling? You know. Well, I don't know. What you doing after the show? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you asking? <laughs> uh, we'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chief Sir Well let's see I'd like to thank Cyber Narcotics For everything he does For the Indie Republic Network And that includes what I do here Which is in addition to doing The main event and the um, Final round show My writings yeah. that appear throughout the Indie Republic In a syndicated format I appreciate that uh, If you check it out And if you have more desire to read what I have to say I'm all across the board chief187.com will tell you how to find me and lastly with this holiday season in mind you want to get a little something something under the tree in addition to that fubo wear t-shirt of the silent do-gooders check out cafepress.com slash chief187 for over 60 items to peruse and shop for and put under the tree so uh, I ask you to check that out thanks so I much I want you the cafe press chief187 and I saw chief187 panties now, Did is you? that chief <laughs> panties with your uh, emblem or face on it, or is it your panties that you're actually selling? They're actually my panties because <laughs> it's gotten down to that kind of <laughs> kind of desperation with the holiday season of here for us. Hey, if you found them, try it. Buy it. See hey, if you like it. I know, DB, you just came with us at the end of the show, man, and your presence is always welcome. Please, do you have any shout-outs or anything? You want to give a quick shout-out? Are you chilling? Uh, I wanted to uh, definitely shout out. Uh, I don't know all my people in the hood, all my people here on EventLevel.com and all across the Indian Public Network. My man Cyber, you of course, and uh, Pimp Camp. That's about it. That's about it. Right up. Okay. All the, all the ladies in the club. Holler. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Rico. I don't know if he's still here Rico. or not, but uh, shout out to Rico. <laughs> Shouts out to HatcherRadio.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, shouts out to Muffin. Uh, Leffy, if you're out there, we miss you, Leffy. Leffikins. Leffy. And I hope everything's going well with you. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Uh, I, myself, Master Wills, want to give a shout out to uh, Pigeon John. Yeah. Coming out of California. And shouts out uh, to his management. And shouts out to Adam Landon and uh, for setting that up. Hook it up with their own Miss LB uh, and uh, putting that together. What a very special interview. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite interviews of all time, I have to say. Yes. Um, Pigeon John. I'm Phenomenal. laughing thinking of the interview right now. I'm, I'm like giggly. Giggly inside. <laughs> giggly like a little school girl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, man, like again, like us on Facebook. Uh, sign up on our sign up on our site. It's real easy. You can join via Facebook and uh, get access to a lot of stuff that people that don't join on um, jo- don't join our site and just browse don't get access to. You you will be privy to some real stuff. We have an incredible community going on at EventLevel.com. Membership has its privileges. Membership has its privileges, and it's free. Free? Yes, free. Free. That's something I can afford. That's something you can afford. You can give yourself a Christmas present. That's free yes. by joining in our free membership on eventlevel.com. Um, so big shots out. You can check us uh, out this Sunday on the final round show. Mm-hmm. And um, coming Do we have a guest? I think event. we have a guest. 
We have a guest, Nick Newell. This guy yes. is crazy. He's got half an arm. Phenomenal. He's a martial artist. He's whipping ass. And you, there's no telling who will come by. Last week we had Mike Esterman. He brought by several guests. Models. He knows what we got going on. Models. Pop a bottle. See the booty waddle. We've got <laughs> models on the show. And, uh, you know, check out all of the shows. Redwood and the Wolf. Mm-hmm. Um, Trap Main- House. Mano was on the uh, Trap House Rock Show with Miss LB and Zenuff Star the other night. Incredibly impressed. And uh, so check out all those podcasts. Check out all the shows and everything we're doing. You can see Chief187 on our site, her blog. And uh, keep up with all the hijinks. Um, and until next time, man, I, well, the shows are just going to keep getting better. I want to thank all your guests for all your support, all your love. You're giving to us, eventlevel.com, the Event Level family, the Indie Republic family. Keeping it real for all the indie artists, gangsters out there. I don't care whether you're doing music, whether you're doing art, poetry, uh, movies, you know, whatever your game is, whatever your hustle is, texting, sexting, sexting while driving. I don't care what you do out there. (laughs) We support you. We love you. We love the fans. And uh, can't wait to be with you next time here on the main event on eventlevel.com. This is Master Wills, and I'm out. Happy holidays. Peace. Eventlevel.com. Join eventlevel.com. Too big. TV.com. Promote, promote yourself. It's bmradio.com. Join the mayhem. mayhem. M-M-E radio.com. Making money. Hatchetradio.com. We support music.com. Sell B. Management. It is Master Wills, you buffoon. I can't take this time for granted. I feel that this could be my last. Ooh, Lord. And I won't make it empty here.